Once upon a time, Vince Lombardi opened holes as part of Fordham's legendary offensive line known as the Seven Blocks of Granite. These days, junior tailback Chase Edmonds is the one getting all the publicity for the Rams, on target to break every rushing record in school history. Today, he leads Fordham in their Patriot League opener against Lafayette. Left side has the edge, touchdown. Oh, the catch. Jack Coffee Field in the Bronx, New York. It's Patriot League football where Fordham plays host to Lafayette. It's the Rams and the Leopards on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. Hello, everybody. So good to have you with us alongside former Patriot League great Tom Kelleher. I'm Ray Crawford. And, Tom, we talked to Andrew Briner, the young coach for Fordham earlier this week, and he said this is what it's all about, getting into league play, and they hope to start with a 1-0 league mark with a win over Lafayette today. Yeah, absolutely. Coach Briner was talking about all games count, but Patriot League games matter just a little bit more. Very excited to see this one start today. Lafayette already got a start in their league schedule, a loss to Holy Cross a week ago. But, Tom, more than the fact that they lost the game, they lost their senior quarterback in Drew Reed. So up steps now a young player in Blake Searfoss, also a senior, getting a lot of the number one reps. They hope that they don't miss a beat on offense for yeah. La Lafayette. Yeah, and they won't. Um, Blake Searfoss, he is a senior. He's prepared like a starter ever since he stepped on campus. Very athletic quarterback, can make plays with his legs. Uh, the, the team's behind him. I think he's going to be okay. And on the other sideline for Fordham, few teams have had the success the Rams have had here in the Patriot League over the past couple of years, and no coincidence that they have had one of the top running backs in the nation, and Chase Edmonds, now a junior, leading the nation on the ground. Yeah, Chase Edmonds, what, what can you say about this guy that hasn't already been said? He is a legitimate NFL prospect. Uh, can do it all, can run with the ball, can catch. He plays on all downs. He can do it all. Uh, all American. He is the real deal. Can't wait to see him play today. Chase Edmonds is a star for Fordham and in the FCS. 146 yards a game, number one in FCS football, second in rushing touchdowns. His Rams about to take on the Leopards. Kickoff is next. Back here with you from Fordham and just uh, back in time to rejoin the coin toss. And it looks like Lafayette has won the toss. Let's see what the decision is going to be here, Tom. And uh, I guess if you're on the road, if you can, you want to be able to have the football in the second half. And it appears as though that's what they have decided to do is defer to the second half. So yeah. Fordham will get it to start things yep. off here. Yeah, and, and deferring, that seems to be the trend these days. And um, looks like we're going to get this thing started. And uh, can't wait. Get a look at uh, head coach Frank Tavani for Lafayette, 83 and 102 in his 17th season. Coaching the Leopards, Ben is at Lafayette for 30 years as yeah. Coach Tavani. Yeah, Coach Tavani, uh, you know, he's been at the helm here for 17 of those years. And uh, very disciplined program he, he runs. His team leads the nation in fewest penalties per game at 3.4. Very organized team, very disciplined, and they all respond well to Coach Tavani. Coach Devani, a veteran of the Patriot League, has also won a number of championships. Boy, what a great stretch that they had a number of years ago. Meanwhile, across the field, he mentioned Andrew Briner in his first season, and he is off to a 2-2 two and two start as a head coach. Very young-looking coach, indeed, as the, the youth uh, reigns supreme here at Fordham. Joe Moorhead, the head coach here, having so much success. Brought him, actually, those guys go back to Moorhead's days at UConn. Yeah, and, and they've got a great close personal relationship where Coach Briner really looks to Coach Moorhead for, for counsel, advice. Just really close, important person in his life. And, uh, you know, glad to see Coach Moorhead moving on to Penn State where he's the offensive coordinator. Are you going to look at Jacob Biss Bissell from Allentown, Pennsylvania, the kicker for Lafayette. An all Patriot League second team member as a freshman last season. And the team special teams MVP in his first year in a Leopards uniform. The two tailbacks for Fordham standee, Kendall Piercy along with Chase Edmonds. Glad to have you with us in the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. Ray Crawford here with Tom Kelleher as Lafayette gets set to kick it away in Fordham season opener in terms of the conference schedule and game number two for Lafayette. 
in time. They're going to kick it away, keep it out of the hands, at least try to as it takes a bounce. And diving on it inside the 10, it looks like at the 10-yard line is going to be Kendall Piercy. So right away, it wants to look like Lafayette wants to keep it out of the hands of the playmakers. Ab absolutely. And uh, they did this little pooch kick um, with the with the goal of just not getting into the, the hands of the receivers. Kind of backfired on Fordham a little bit because nobody caught the ball. It bounced, probably got an extra 15 yards. Fordham's going to have a long field here to start their first series. Well, somebody was calling for it, so they were prepared for it. They must have seen that on film. Kevin Anderson, the talented senior quarterback from Boca Raton, Florida, one of the captains. He's also the quarterback for this team, for Fordham. As the Rams go to work in their first possession of the afternoon, and the first carry for Chase Edmonds out of the backfield, dives ahead for a couple. I'll tell you, I wrote a lot of notes down for these games as I do for all of them. I, I was starting to run out of room on Chase Edmonds. Uh, I mean, every accolade you could imagine, All-American, um, you know, just two-time All-American, absolute great player, but uh, he has the vision to be a great player, and that's what we want to see today. Anderson on second down, steps up, and he's going to run it. Kevin Anderson will take a slide at about the 24-yard line, and he gets the first down. Get a look at uh, the members of the offense here. For four of these men charged with opening up those holes for Chase Edmonds and the great vision behind those blockers. Austin Longy, one of the talented receivers. 20 grabs, 301 yards, and three touchdowns so far this season. Almost picked off. Almost picked off as it falls and hits the ground. Parrish Simmons on the coverage for Lafayette. Well, yeah, as you can see right there, um, you know, ball just thrown a little bit to the outside. Could have been detrimental going the other way for a pick six, but fortunately for Fordham fans, that did not happen. So now after that, they go to second down and 10. As Edmonds dives ahead for a pickup of about three. And if you're if the Lafayette defense, this is what you're hoping for, isn't it, third and long throughout Absol the day? Absolutely. If they if Lafayette can get Fordham in third and long and 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 force quarterback Kevin Anderson to beat him with the arm, not, not Chase Edmonds beating him with their legs. That, that's considered a moral victory here for the Leopards. They're going to be stacking that box. They're going to put a lot of pressure on Kevin Anderson today. Got to look at the defense for Lafayette. Without, though, Brandon Bryant likely out for the season. He's certainly out for this game. On third down and seven, this ball is intercepted, bringing it back the other way. And into the end zone for the touchdown as Lafayette gets on the board, Philip Parham as he comes up and makes a play, and Anderson is intercepted and bringing it back for six is Philip Parnum, the junior from Lincoln Park, Michigan. It seemed as Anderson was dropping back, he had the right guy, but just a little slip and fall here by the receiver. Parnum's able to get an easy pick six, run it back. Lafayette strikes first and gets the first score of the game, but I, I think that field's got to be a little bit slippery out there with all the rain and moisture out there. Um, wow, what a great return here. And as you can see, uncontested. Uh, Philip Parnum coming in for a touchdown. Lafayette scores first. Wow, the fans shocked here as Bissell's extra point attempt is on its way, and it is good. And so a surprising lead here for Lafayette as they intercept Kevin Anderson. And Philip Parnum takes it in for his second interception of the season. And the touchdown, it's the, just the third interception of the season for Anderson. Yep, and as you can see, plenty of time. Anderson threw a nice ball, but literally it was just the slipping of the receiver here, and Parnum takes it back for an easy six points. And that's something Coach Tavani had talked about, is they need big plays. They need the defense to just execute the plan, win on special teams, win, win on defense, and what a great start for Lafayette. Uh, what a great way for them to get started here. You know, it's something that Aunt Briner told us on Thursday. He said, look, Lafayette has been in games. I mean, this is a competitive team. It's just they don't have the wins to show for it. And Holy Cross needed 22 points in the fourth quarter a week ago to come back and beat them. So the Leopards are certainly a team that can contend and has a lot of experience to win on a tough place to play here in the Bronx. Yeah, and a talented roster. Um, you know, quite a few. Scholarship players here, great athletes, a lot coming from the, the Pennsylvania Valley area, and uh, they match up well against Fordham here for talent. 
This one is going to go to Piercy, so he's going to have a chance and a good head start at the 20 across the 30. Kendall Piercy, the backup tailback along the far sideline, finally knocked out of bounds at about midfield. And Piercy is one of those players Coach Briner could not talk enough about. He's a senior backup to Chase Edmonds, and who wants to be in that role, right? But boy, Piercy, he contributes on all four special teams plays. Uh, on offense, when he's in there subbing for Edmonds, he provides that spark, but he is the leader of the special teams, and he's given his team great field position here, just shy of the 50-yard line. Well, the kicker, Bissell, the last one to lay a lick on Piercy to finish him off, getting him out of bounds. So first to 10 for Anderson as his second attempt on the field for the offense for Fordham from the 48. Steps up, pass over the middle and complete. And caught across the 30 yard line and Faison Odom gets his first catch of the afternoon. Yep, Anderson, again, plenty of time in the pocket, steps up, delivers a beautiful pass to the big tight end here. Six foot eight, 250 folks. This guy's an NFL prospect as well. Faison Odom, you're gonna hear his name all day. And up the middle is Chase Edmonds. He's got it into the house for a touchdown. Chase Edmonds going the distance for the score. And it pulls Fordham within one with 2.57 to go. As you can see here, plenty of, of space. Chase Edmonds avoids the first tackler, and, and then it's just a run to the end zone here. But I uh, give credit to the, the version of seven blocks of granite here uh, in today's version. Offensive line did a great job opening up a line. Chase Edmond takes it from there and just runs in for the score. Wow, th this one could be a shootout here. This is going to be a great game. Yeah, just two plays and 52 yards on that score. The big pass play by Odom and then the extra point there from Red to tie the game up at seven. So Chase Edmonds, we knew it was probably just a matter of time. Lafayette trying to contain him in some short runs, but eventually he's able to break through the junior. Takes it to the house, and Fordham ties it at seven. Well, an action-packed first couple of minutes here from Fordham. Tied at seven, just under 13 left. This week on the Seth Davis Show, it's Olympic gymnast Allie Rassman. Hear what she has to say about winning gold in the Rio and London Games and competing against Simone Biles. Watch the exclusive interview after the game only on CampusInsiders.com. <laughs> excited to see our Olympians in Rio this year. Absolutely. What a great medal uh, run for all the Olympians. You've got to just take your hat off and, and salute those young men and women. Uh, fantastic uh, contribution. Outstanding. A lot of fun watching that. And the college football player, the receiver from Oregon, actually being on the track team before he returned to the Ducks. So college football represented in some way in Rio as well. Fordham on the kick, it's McKay Red kicks it, and taken at the 10-yard line, and then dropped at the 20. Deep man for Lafayette. Yeah, short kick, uh, Lafayette uh, gonna get uh, right, right around the 20-yard line. Looked like backup running back C.J. Amell getting the kickoff return. Blake Searfoss coming out onto the field. Again, we mentioned having to come on in relief a week ago and that loss to Holy Cross. Some big numbers though, Tom. 33 of 45 for 280 yards and four scores. And the key there, no interceptions. He didn't turn the ball over. And Coach Devani was saying, um, you know, this guy's come in on campus from day one and is prepared like a starter. Searfoss looking for the home run right from get-go downfield. Tim Vangelis, the intended receiver, over his head. And that's Coach Tavani having a lot of confidence in this young man, Blake Searfoss, a senior, very athletic quarterback. Um, he can throw the ball, has a big arm, but in the first play of the first series, just allows him to let it rip. Um, that's confidence that Coach Tavani has in this quarterback, Blake Searfoss. So with a tie game, let's see what Sirfus does here. This time he hands it off and stacked up and stopped on his first run of the afternoon is Deshaun Brown. There's the Fordham defense, but we hear so much about the offense, but the defense number one in FCS with 10 fumble recoveries, number two in turnover margin. 
at 2.5, number three with 15 turnovers gained. It's quite a unit for coordinator John Woolley in his third season here at Fordham. And the first third and long situation for Lafayette's offense. And Searfoss, as he feels the extra pressure, steps up in the pocket, dumps it short, and the pass is caught. It looks like it's going to be big Dylan Wadsworth with his first catch of the afternoon. And he's able to pick up the first down. So we talk about the Fordham defense, but lets an opportunity slip away. Yep, and, and there's Searfoss, you know, showing that athleticism, avoiding the first defender just enough using those legs to get in a position where he could dump the ball off but gets the first down and moves the chains. Kudos to Blake Searfoss. Searfoss now gives it to Joey Chenoweth coming around for the left side and he is bet and stacked up and stopped. Max Roberts among those on the stop. Along with Justin Vaughn, you get a look at the big 6'5", 287 pound senior right there from Hamilton, Ontario. Number 91 for the Rams. Snuffing out that play as the clock continues to roll here in the first quarter. And second down and 12 for the Leopards. Three receivers to the left. Sear Foss pitches it out to the left side. Stacked up there is Jihad Pretlow. Pretlow on the stop of Deshaun Brown. I'll tell you, a sea of maroon there. Uh, not a lot of room to run. Lafayette trying to stretch the field, but maybe got it back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, a swarming defense, these Fordham Rams. They run to the ball, make plays. Lafayette converting on 34% of their third downs this season. They already converted on one, though, just a few moments ago to Wadsworth. Let's see what... Sear Foss can do here on third and long. This time he's going up top, has a man on the near sideline and overthrows him as it falls incomplete. Matt Morazic, the intended receiver for the Leopards. Again, plenty of time here for Sear Foss. Puts a little air under it just out of the reach of uh, Nurozak's uh, grasp there, but gosh, I love the confidence that Coach Devani's showing in him, throwing the ball, opening up this offense and letting Searfoss do what he does best and take advantage of that big arm. Ryan Forrester set to punt it away. And it's Corey Cattle deep, and he will watch it bounce and roll out of bounds. A fast pace first quarter here at Fordham. We're tied up, Lafayette and the Rams, not at seven apiece. Tie game, fans in the stands, a little sleeveless weather, a little muggy in humidity though, I think uh, for this game. This afternoon, uh, overcast skies calling for rain later today and what is obviously the effects of Hurricane Matthew. And certainly for those out there watching, we hope you and any loved ones and family members that you have along the path of Hurricane Matthew made it through safely. Anderson over the middle has got Odom wide open at midfield. Fades on Odom, 6'8", 250 pounds, a big guy that can run and he goes the distance for the touchdown. Uh, you gotta love this guy. Six foot eight, 250. Just absolutely creates a matchup nightmare. But there is a flag down on the field. And typically, when it's in that area, it could be working against the offense, folks. This one could be coming back. Looks to be an ineligible receiver. But wow, you can't take away from that play, though. Wow, what a what nice separation by the big tight end, Faison Odom. Well, an unfortunate turn of events here as Andrew Briner is kind of arguing the case. And he certainly is disagreeing with the call, the officials on the field. All right, so he got the answer that he wanted. And, uh, yeah, so they're going to call it on Jordan Allen um, as an ineligible receiver. You guys don't want to be the story of the game. But that, that hurts. So that takes back a big play. Um, but again, I go back to the big tight end. He just gets separation. He's so hard to cover. I think he's going to be the weapon to go to today. Well, Edmonds on the sideline as a whistle comes in. I think he's got to catch his breath after that one. 76 yards. 
some movement. Let's, let's get a look here, Tom, for the pre-snap formation. Say 25, right there in the inside of okay. the receivers. Yeah, it looks like it was an alignment error. They had uh, too many people lined up on the line of scrimmage. So essentially, one of those uh, receivers has got to step back into the backfield. Anderson to the far sideline, pass is caught over there. And uh, we had a good start here for this offense for Fordham as they're kind of settling in here a little bit in this first quarter. Jordan Allen with his first catch of the afternoon. So second down and nine here for the Rams. Kendall Piercy still out there in the backfield. Shouldn't be a big surprise, Andrew Briner told us, that they work on getting him a certain number of carries. Now Anderson, speaking of carries, will carry it himself across the 45-yard line before he's taken down. Another first down as the Rams continue to move the chains. And yeah. Well, you go down the middle, go to the sideline on the pass. Next thing you know, your quarterback's running down the middle. Hey, you know what? Whatever it takes to get that first down. A lot of uh, athleticism here shown by Kevin Anderson. He just sees an opening, he takes it. I'd like to just see him get down and protect himself. He doesn't want to be taking big hits. Uh, Fordham cannot afford to lose uh, Kevin Anderson, the senior quarterback. Anderson was nearly 4,200 career passing yards. Boy, some good footwork in the pocket from the senior. Decides to keep it himself near field, still inbounds, and finally pushed out at the 41-yard line, but not before picking up another first down. Yeah, smart play, Anderson. He gets enough to get the first down, steps out of bounds, avoids the big hit, and just keeps those chains going. Boy, I love the footwork. Steps up, 10 to the side. Yep, and uh, he's getting blocks downfield. Just enough to get the first down, get out of bounds, avoid that big hit. The handoff. Lee Piercy is still out of the field. Kendall Piercy dives ahead. And it looks like he may have picked up just a half a yard on that, so second down. Not a lot of room to run there, but uh, Piercy, um, as we talked to Coach Briner, really loves this young man. Uh, he's in that backup role, but they've got a specific package designed for him to get a certain number of carries. So we're gonna see him as that spark, just to kind of mix it up between Edmonds and himself. A similar lineup on the left side with the receivers as Anderson takes it himself and spins ahead for a pickup of about six or seven on the play. But again, the, the pre-snap lineup looked similar to one that they got flagged on on the Faison Odom touchdown that was called back. True, true. This time they just got it right. It was yeah. probably, probably a half a yard difference in the alignment. So now third and short for Fordham. And I don't know if Lafayette really expected as, to see as much running. We certainly know Kevin Anderson has the ability with his legs to do it as much as he's done in this drive is kind of surprising. Anderson fumbles the snap on the, but he's still, look at this, leaps one defender, still on his feet. Kevin Anderson, will he take it in for the touchdown? He will. Wow. The senior <laughs> quarterback with that run, the leading rusher in this game so far. Jeez. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, Chase who? Look at Anderson here, makes something out of nothing, uh, bobbles the snap and literally takes off to one side, finds an opening, and it's just off to the races here. Kevin Anderson just creating something on the fly here, making something out of nothing, gets another score here for the Rams. Pretty remarkable. We thought we'd be talking about all the passing that Kevin Anderson can do, and certainly there's a lot of football left to be played in this game, but they have found something, at least on that drive, to exploit in that Lafayette defense as the extra point from Red is through. And Fordham takes a 14-7 lead after the four-play drive. Or Anderson with four carries, 74 yards in the drive, and he finishes off with a touchdown. Well, off in the distance, you kind of get a look at uh, the weather in terms of visibility here in the Bronx as we are looking down toward the city there in that direction. Yeah, you can see the fog coming in. There's saying we might get some rain here in the second half, but uh, considering what we saw with Hurricane Matthew coming up the coast, uh, it looks like the northeast area is going to avoid that big storm. So if a little rain comes, we'll take it. Alejandro Cardenas set to kick it off for Fordham. And for the five across the 20, a nice return here for 
Lafayette, C.J. Emil with another return. Yeah, decent return here. Uh, Lafayette's going to have a short field to work to start it off. But how about Kevin Anderson? He, he started off a little rusty with that pick. Uh, his receiver went down, slipped. But since then, you know, Kevin Anderson's been able to make things happen with his legs. That's that athleticism, uh, being spontaneous, making things happen, avoiding those big hits. That's the key, is he gets what he needs to. And uh, with the fumble here, could have been disaster, but he's able to find something and uh, barely even touched here, but gets a, a score here for the Fordham Rams. So athleticism taking over here for Kevin Anderson, making plays happen with his legs. Now five carries for 83 yards. Kevin Anderson in the first rushing touchdown of the season. The pass is caught and going out of bounds is Nick Franzis. Yeah, we didn't think Anderson was gonna be the leading rusher after the first quarter, but uh, you know, you find a way to win and you take what the defense gives you. And, and right now, obviously Fordham has found something that they can do by uh, exposing that defense of Lafayette. The middle seems to be opening up, and Kevin Anderson's taking full advantage of it. He is indeed, and Lafayette trailing 14-7. to seven. Their defense getting them on the board. Sir Foss, his pass intended for Yasser Thomas falls incomplete. Yeah, it looked like it was just out of reach. I'm not sure if he was throwing it away or just, uh, just a little timing issue there. But Searfoss, uh, as I said, Tavani feels very comfortable allowing Searfoss to use his arm, throw the ball. They're not being reliant on the run, which a lot of people were thinking would happen when your backup quarterback comes in. Usually you rely on the run that much more, but not here. Coach Tavani, fully, fully confident here in Searfoss. Well, second down and 10 for the Leopards. Searfoss back to pass and tries to dump it away. He feels the pressure and kind of throws it at the feet of a mill as a number of Fordham Rams were on the charge in pursuit trying to get in Sear Foss's faces. Yeah. And that's just a smart play. When the play is not there, don't try to force it. Just throw it into the ground. Come back to, to fight another day. Brings up a third and long, but uh, if that thing would have been thrown higher up in the air, that could have been a pick six going the other way. So headsy play by the senior Blake Sear Foss. Just throw it away, come back and reboot. As you mentioned, Tom, Searfoss, even though he's a senior backup, gets a lot of number one reps during the week of practice, which is key today. Here comes the pressure again. He steps up calmly and delivers a nice ball to Matt Morozik, who makes the catch. The That's junior nice. from LaGrange, Illinois. And Searfoss avoided a big hit. Look at the yeah. heat coming from both ends. Yeah, Searfoss just steps up and delivers a bullet. Looks like it's going to be short of the first down. But, uh, you know, Searfoss just stepping up just enough, could have, could have taken a big hit, but instead delivers a bullet and brings up a fourth down. Leopards have converted on 67% of their fourth down opportunities this year. To the right side, and he has a man wide open out there on the far side is Kyle Mayfield. Mayfield has the first down and then some as he was unchecked by the defense out of the backfield. I tell you, he was wide open. Uh, had to be some miscommunication. Because with a simple uh, slip route like that, you would think the linebacker would have him in coverage, but nobody nobody within sight and enough for the first down. The chains move, Lafayette working toward the red zone here. But heads up play here, and Mayfield gets a much needed first down here for Lafayette. So good play under pressure here for this Lafayette offense. Sir Foss, that one's to Morazic again, and a great catch as he extends his hands. Another first down as they get in the, inside the red zone. Yeah, what a tough play to, to defend. Mirzak, 6'4", 215, long arms. All you got to do is just lead them high and inside. It's very hard to defend that pass, but uh, the athleticism of Mirzak being 6'4", he can jump, long arms, very hard to defend. And another first down, and you sense that this Leopards offense has got some confidence and a little swagger on this drive. As they trail by seven. A mill out of the backfield and a great stiff arm that he delivers to the face mask of number 44, Max Roberts for the Rams. High snap, could have been disaster, but uh, Searforce able to, to jump up, get the snap and make a play. Now, as a, running, as a former running back, you love to, to see this when you can take your free arm and kind of be the hammer, not the nail. You know, deliver, <laughs> yeah, right. deliver the blow. Mayfield on the it. nice run. 
Coming into the game with 30 carries and 88 yards and a touchdown is Kyle Mayfield. He stays out there. And Searfoss looking to the end zone and sails just over the head of Yasser Thomas, well beyond the back end line of the end zone. Yeah, had single coverage on the outside, and uh, Searfoss made the right read. Just overthrown a little bit, but uh, nice route. Boy, Searfoss yeah. with all kinds of time. Yeah, he just overthrew him. Uh, Thomas had his man beat. That'd be number 35. Antonio Jackson, the defensive back. Uh, but that's the timing. And a lot of times when you don't get all those reps in practice, you know, you're trying to develop the chemistry, get the rhythm with your, your first uh, line receivers. Uh, but I think as the game moves on, you're going to start to see Searfrost hit some of those passes. They're one and three on third down, going for the end zone. Ball is tipped and falls incomplete. Well, there's a pass intended for Tim Vangelis and Dylan Maben on the coverage and a nice job on the jump ball to defend that play in the end zone, bring up fourth down, and they'll have to kick it. Yeah, I'd like to see Murzak on some of those jump balls. You know, 6'4", 215, kind of has that basketball player-type body. Get him up in the air, throw it high, see what he can do. Jacob Bissell on for the 35-yard attempt, one shy of his season long. This one has plenty on it. And it's good. So Jacob Bissell with a 35-yard field goal, one shy of his season long, which is 36. There's a Frank Tavani with his arm around his senior quarterback back in Blake Searfoss. Is they would have liked to have had the touchdown, most certainly an impressive drive stall, and they had to settle for the field goal. Yeah, but you know, Searfoss, uh, he's getting the nod today due to the injury suffered by Drew Reed, the starting quarterback, last week against Holy Cross. You know, against Holy Cross, um, Drew Reed came in, um, was, was having a good game here, takes off, it's about a 10 yard run, but he just takes this vicious hit, as you can see, head to head contact, did not look intentional at all, but you know, when you take those head to head shots, uh, there's a there's a very high level of importance to concussion protocol, player safety, keeping players out. So Drew's going to sit this game out. We hope we hope he's better, uh, but in his absence, Searforce is going to get the get the nod here. He came in off of relief and played really well. 33 out of 45, um, 280 yards passing, four touchdowns, and did not throw an interception. So he was able to come in, keep his team in the game. But Holy Cross just pulled it out at 22 points in the fourth quarter, just enough to beat Lafayette. But the Leopards are looking to rebound today. They are, and hoping to give them good field position is Kendall Piercy. Piercy on the return, a flag comes in. Kendall Piercy, yeah. Yeah. Piercy finally stopped at 33. Yeah, Piercy, a bit of a pinball guy. I love the way he runs, great special teamer. Typically, it's holding when you see a flag like that in the, in the return, it's usually going against the, the kickoff return team with a hold. All right, so the penalty is, it looks like, going to go against Yeah, that's going to work against Fordham. Yeah, look, looks like a holding on Fordham. That'll set them back a little bit, but uh, just shy of the 20-yard line. Well, I think we're seeing again that competitiveness that we expected to see as Lafayette scores on the interception return for a touchdown. Fordham answers with a pair of scores, but Lafayette doesn't go away. Here's Chase Edmonds who puts his head down, follows that big offensive line, plows ahead for a gain of about seven on the play. Fordham now penalized three times for 20 yards in this game. So second and three for the Rams. Edmonds, the tailback. Oh. Makes one move, and Edmonds is on the run across midfield. And into Lafayette territory. Yeah, I mean, Chase Edmonds, what, what can you say about this guy? He sees an opening here, just that quick jump cut and gets out of bounds. As we were talking to Coach Tavani, asking him, what kind of style of player would you compare uh, uh, Chase Edmonds to? 
He said Barry Sanders. <laughs> what you know? What a great, great way to be compared to. It's high praise, certainly, for number 22 in red. Anderson can't find anyone, still on his feet, and he will keep it himself and duck out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Here is uh, Frank Tavani, a former running back himself. Here's his thoughts on Chase Evans. A former running back and running back coach and a guy who likes to give the ball to the, to the tailback and running back. Certainly, uh, at least watching them play against everybody else is a pleasure. <laughs> against us, it's not as pleasurable. <laughs> That's true, and boy, what did he, he had quite a game in this game last year, and here's Edmonds trying to rack up another one, a spin move. Chase Edmonds still on his feet, finally dropped at the 10-yard line. And Chase Edmonds, you know, highly recruited player out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You know Lafayette would have loved to have him uh, as part of their program. But Coach Devani could not say enough good things about this young man. Humble, uh, just a high character guy, and a phenomenal athlete with tremendous vision. Uh, Fordham is very fortunate to have him on their roster for sure. Yeah, and Tavani kind of laughed and chuckled. You know, just don't like to see it against them. And boy, what a game he had last year in this game. 234 yards against Lafayette's defense a year ago. Anderson with the pitch to Edmonds. A bit of a Hit step, tries to gain a couple of yards, and he's now inside the 10. And one of the, the great traits that I've seen over the years with, with running backs, the great ones always make the first guy miss. Uh, when you have space, that's an opportunity for the, the running back to kind of make his move, shake and bake, stop on a dime, whatever you want to call it. But boy, this guy Chase Edmonds, he has a tremendous knack of making that first player miss. Well, he, he saw him coming off. To the sideline, catch a little bit of a breather. Kendall Piercy now in at tailback, but Anderson's gonna throw it for the end zone and wide open for the touchdown, Corey Cattle. And put six more on the board for the Rams. Kevin Anderson pass, complete to number two, Corey Cattle. Yep, you can see nice play fake. And Anderson just has his man wide open. Corey Cattle in the corner of the end zone places the ball well, where Cattle's going to be the only one who can catch it. Outside shoulder, uh, no way the defender's going to get there. Great pitch and catch. Cattle with the score. Again, another nice play here by Kevin Anderson, the quarterback. Anderson and the offense keep racking up numbers, and a miscue on the extra point. Well, that could come back to bite Fordham later in the game. But, uh, you know, when, when something like that happens, uh, Joe Pavlik, a veteran guy, senior, he's, he's been in every single game uh, since he stepped on campus here uh, as a senior now. Um, but with a bobbled smap, don't try to make something out of nothing in this instance. Yeah. Just get down and lift a fight another day. Well, it almost looked like McKay Red didn't like something about by the time he got to the football, it wasn't right where he wanted it. A lot of times what happens in those situations is the kicker yell down, fire, fire, right? So that sure. everybody knows it's Absolutely. <laughs> the ball's not going off. If it's not there, <laughs> it's not going up. And you think you can make something out of it. Corey Cattle, his first touchdown reception of the season, a six-play drive, 82 yards. Edmonds with 59 on three carries. So he says there's a little something back and forth here between Kevin Anderson and Chase Edmonds, right? Absolutely. He said, hey, I'm the running back for this team. <laughs> A little, little competition going on. But I tell you, nobody would have expected Kevin Anderson to be uh, doing so much with his legs. But again, you, you take what the defense gives you. And if they're, they're going to allow running lanes, quarterback's going to take it all day. And you got to look at Sear Foss on the sideline. We're going to get back out on the field and, and try it again. Edmonds and Anderson combining so far for 189 yards on the ground. It'll be a high kick that's going to out of bounds. Go out of bounds.
Well, it's never too early for playoff projections. Who's in, who's out, and who's ready to shake up the rankings. Join Campus Insiders every Tuesday at 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 Central for our live broadcast inside the college football rankings powered by Exiants. Boy, the FBS season is all kinds of twists and turns every single week, so be sure to check out Shea Pepper, Jordan Cornette, Pete Futek in the studio every Tuesday. Going deep, Searfoss. He's got Chenoweth. And Chenoweth will take it into the end zone. Joey Chenoweth on the long touchdown grab from Searfoss. Uh, and what a gutsy play by Blake Searfoss. He took a big hit here. As you can see, as he's rolling out to his right, he sees his receiver and he takes a shot, but he delivers the ball and again, throws the ball on the outside shoulder. So the only one that's going to catch it is the receiver here. And what a fantastic, fantastic grab here by Chenoweth to get the score. I tell you, I, I did not imagine this game being such a shootout yeah. here throwing the ball. I thought it was going to be a grounded pound type game, but, you know, I've been wrong before. Well, he, gets uh. be <laughs> he gets behind Antonio Jackson. And that Fordham defense. The extra point is good. And it's a three-point game. And Chenoweth doing a nice job to get separation. Catch the ball in stride, another score. Yeah, Tyler Long out there on the coverage. Noah Fitzgerald trying to chase it down as well. And Joey Chenoweth picks up his first touchdown of the season. A 65-yard TD strike. And boy, Frank Tavani has to be feeling pretty good about this. And let's get one more look. And I'll tell you, Blake Searfoss has been extremely impressive so far in this first quarter. Yeah, he really has. Um, he's been throwing the ball. Coach said he's got a big arm, and they wanted to take advantage of it. It's just a comfort level. And you can see, uh, you know, just taking a shot here, you know, the defensive player here coming off the, the corner. Looked like uh, Brandon Weir got a good piece of him. But Sierpo steps up, delivers the long ball. Uh, when you can stretch the field vertically and throw those long passes, it keeps the defense on their toes. And I tell you, Lafayette uh, coming out firing here on all eight cylinders here in the first uh, quarter, looking real strong. And Jahan Pretlow and Kendall Piercy back to receive this kick. Set to come from Jacob Bissell. As Lafayette pulls this one to within three, a high kick, and Piercy's going to get a shot at it from the nine. Piercy Ooh. tries to leap. And he's brought down at the 28-yard line. That's where the Rams and Kevin Anderson will come back out with his offense here in what will likely be the last offensive the set for this first Warren. quarter. As you can see, Piercy here leaving his feet. Coaches don't teach that, folks. So kids at home, that's not something that you teach, but you see it more and more where players, uh, they see an opportunity, they make the leap, but very dangerous. You're defenseless when you're up there in the air. But Piercy, uh, gutsy, gutsy special teams performer, putting his team in decent field position to start this uh, drive. Colin Thorne knocked him out of the air, knocked his feet out from underneath him. Chase Edmonds along the far side. Got another flag down. Chase Edmonds, the ball carrier. There's we'll have to see what this call is. Fordham has Could be another hold. been penalized a number of times here this first quarter. Personal foul, hands to the face, 28, Ooh. defense. Interesting. Very uncharacteristic. Um, uh, on uh, number 28, Colin Aberhath. Um, the interesting thing is talking to Coach Tavani, one of the things he takes tremendous pride in is the lack of penalties. They lead, um, they lead the nation. Fewest penalties going, 3.4 overall. But he just said, you know, the personal fouls, uh, you know, hands to the face, that kind of thing, very uncharacteristic. And that just shows the discipline of, of Coach Tavani and his team. Here's Anderson again running with it. Gets across midfield. Gets closer Kevin to that Anderson, first down marker. Carrier. Bring up second down and five on the five-yard pickup. A gain of four yards. Second down and six. The offensive coordinator for Fordham, Tyler Bowen, in his second season, taking over for Briner as, of course, Briner was elevated to the head coaching position.
Anderson on second down. Pocket collapses. And throws it. But nice job of Kevin Anderson. You know, he, he got pressure. He was able to use his legs, get out, roll, see the field, try to make something happen. Um, but could have could have been a sack, could have taken a loss. But that athleticism allows him to keep the drive alive. And I tell you, I've been very impressed with Kevin Anderson. He's been playing well. Anderson coming into this game just shy of 1,000 yards passing. He's gone over that for the season in this performance today. Yeah, he had a big year last year, throwing for over 3,000 yards, 32 touchdowns. Uh, but you can see he's the leader of this offense, and his team responds around him. Fordham converting on 51% of their third down opportunities this year. They convert yet again. This one caught by Isaiah Seawright. 6'4", 234 pound sophomore from Tinton Falls, New Jersey. And that catch by Seawright will be the final play of quarter number one. Back and forth battle here at Fordham. As Lafayette got on the board with the interception touchdown, Chase Edmonds. And Kevin Anderson and the rest of the Rams have responded and Joey Chenoweth takes it to the house. It's a three-point game after one quarter play. The New York Botanical Garden, just uh, about a down and out away from here at campus at Fordham. Absolutely beautiful place, and we also have the Bronx Zoo right down the street. But uh, the Botanical Garden, one of the uh, all-time great places up here in the, the Fordham area. Anderson on first and 10, looks to his right now, comes around to his left, pass downfield, and it is caught. And a nice catch there from Austin Longy. Yeah, Longy, uh, you know, just 150 pounds. He's a small receiver, 5'8", but he's very quick. He's able to get separation from the defender. And I'm um, very impressed with the amount of space he gets, the distance between the defender and himself. Uh, but creates a great target here for quarterback Kevin Anderson. Gets another first down. So first and 10 for the 20. They give us to Kendall Piercy along the right side. So Piercy goes ahead and with that rush, just his second carry of the afternoon. Fordham led by Chase Edmonds over the century mark, 102 yards on eight carries. Kevin Anderson with 94. This is Edmonds again up the middle, breaks some tackles. He's in for the second time. Well, Chase Edmonds, he's doing it all. And I believe with that score, I believe Chase Edmonds is now the leading scorer in Patriot League history. Just check off another one on the list. Boy, how he makes guys miss. A number of Lafayette defenders had a chance to get a couple of hands on him right here. Yeah, I mean, they just bounce right off him, and he's got the strong lower body. Um, but you never see the first guy tackle him. You know, he gets in there, takes a hit, he bounces off, keeps going. But uh, there's a reason why he's a two-time All-American and great player. Um, fantastic, but he's now the leading scorer in Patriot League history, surpassing Jordan Smith out of Colgate. And I remember watching Jordan play many, many times up in Colgate. Yeah. Nine carries, 121 yards, and a pair of scores. The second one giving Fordham a 10-point lead here in the early goings of the second quarter. Well, Chase Edmonds getting the job done on the field and, and in the classroom. Boy, you have to if, you, if you're a student athlete here at Fordham. And the, the Rams enjoying his play as students and fans have. He's just one of those special players that we get an opportunity to see. And in my three years of covering the Patriot League in depth. It's been a real joy to watch the Jerry Rice Award winner as the top freshman player in FCS football back in 2014. And the fact that he's stayed healthy and produced the kind of numbers that he's been able to produce in these three years has been pretty remarkable, and he adds to it here today. Cardenas on the kick. And taken on the far side across the 30-yard line. Finally brought down for Lafayette. Mitchell on the return. Jesse Bramble making the tackle and for the Rams. it will be Lafayette and Blake Sirfoss out there again. And th this is a, a this is not really a game if you're Lafayette. If you want 
you don't desire to get an offensive shootout, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it, you're just not going to win that kind yeah. of game, right? Exactly. At some point, you got to establish the run. That's been kind of the Achilles heel for Lafayette all year long. Just not being able to establish the run early. Then you get behind and you start you start throwing the ball and trying to take some chances. But Lafayette looked good starting out, but the last couple series uh, playing from behind. Searfoss feels the heat, but gets rid of it, delivers it to Mrazic for the catch. And another look at uh, Chase Edmonds. I mean, has he even broken a sweat? <laughs> look at that. <laughs> you know, he had over 100 yards in the first quarter, but uh, when I was talking with Coach Briner, he couldn't say enough good things about this young man. He's humble, he just never relaxes, he understands the game, he understands defensive schemes, and he's gonna get a look at the next level for sure. The handoff to Deshaun Brown. And you mentioned Lafayette trying to get the running game going. You really haven't seen a featured back. I mean, I guess if you could say that there's one guy, it's Brown, but we've seen a mill, we've seen Mayfield back there, along with Deshaun Brown. And it seems like there's been kind of a rotation of three yeah. guys. They just haven't found the guy. They've, they've given a lot of guys opportunities, but no one has really just kind of taken the bull by the horns and, and declared it as their position. But uh, it's the one thing that's holding them back. They're just not able to establish a running game. Searfoss, he almost was wrapped up for a sack. Somehow gets loose. The ball comes down field, and it is knocked down and falls incomplete and bring out fourth down and short as Sirifos was running for his life. Oh, he really was here. Avoids, avoids the first tackler here, tries to make something uh, happen here. At this point, throw the ball out of bounds. He threw it into a, a sea of maroon where three defenders were right there. Could have easily been a pick. Great job of avoiding the sack, but when you get to that point, throw it out of bounds and, and reboot. But it, it'll bring up a fourth down. George Dawson was bringing the heat, looking for his second sack of the season. Sirfoss able to get free. And a nice punt. And is taken at about the 15, and springing loose his cattle across the 20 and pushes ahead for a gain of a couple of more, finally brought down to the 23-yard line after the punt off the foot of Ryan Forrester. And cattle with a catch in this game. And also in the special teams department as well, getting into the act. Yeah, does a nice job of fielding the ball, making the first defender miss. Starting to rain offense. now, so first that ball is going to get ten. more and more slick and wet. And, uh, you know, when that happens, you start to see the fumbles and the bad snaps and that sort of thing. So players really have to take care of the ball. That's, that's priority number one, is protect the football at all costs. Those prepared have umbrellas. They are out. Those are not. Headed for some cover, hopefully temporarily. Chase Edmonds breaks right up the middle, and he has a first down and more. Stopped at the 39, so tack on some more for the young junior. As you see, nice hole here. Chase Edmonds, again, makes the first player miss, puts a great move, gets another another 10 yards out of it. But he's always leaning forward. He's always, you know, he's always got his body lean going, good control. Um, what a pleasure to watch this guy run. And it still bounces into the left side that cuts it back in in the middle once again. And it just takes a lot of guys to bring him down. When you, when you finally see it, the pursuit as TJ Jones among the white jerseys trying to track him down and bring down number 22. Yeah, just good explosion. Uh, he's able to just, just maintain vision. And then once he gets hit, he's a tough kick. He's gonna he's gonna take on those defenders and keep keep those legs churning. Pass near side from Anderson is complete to Cattle as the rain continues a, a steady drizzle, I would call it here at Coffee Field, is not deterring the passing game at least for Fordham at this point. Rams quickly back up to the line of scrimmage. Total offensive yards in this one. Doubling the output are the Rams compared to the Leopards in this one, but still just a 10-point game with 11-15 to go in the second quarter. Yeah. That time the Lafayette defense able to corral backup running back Kendall Piercy. And again, talking to uh, Coach Briner, he really likes he really likes Piercy. They have a special package just designed for him. They want to get him a designated number of carries each week. 
And when he's not running the ball, he's playing on all four special teams. Anderson gets the call from the sideline. Yeah, Piercy, seven carries for 54 yards. We mentioned that Lafayette lost a Holy Cross a week ago. Well, Fordham coming in off a loss as well on third and short. Piercy, not much there as he just dives ahead. He might have picked up one, so it's going to bring up fourth down. And they're sending out Chase Edmonds. This is certainly out of kicking range, one would think, especially in these weather conditions. Well, you need a yard or two. You got the best running back in uh, FCS. Why not take advantage of him? But now, I think he's going to be a decoy here. Anderson, Anderson sees something at the line that he likes. Oh, and the snap oh. goes on the ground. Well, we know what the ha happened the last time. There was a bobbled snap. He ran it for a touchdown, but not here as he's dropped. Yeah, we, we, just, we just talked about it. As that rain comes down, the ball just gets slicker and slicker. Yeah, you can see just a bad snap here. The wet football. Um, and I tell you, Kevin Anderson almost got there. He's going to end up being a yard short. But as that ball gets more slick, yeah, I mean, couldn't even, center couldn't even get the ball up in the air that time. And, uh, well, good news for Lafayette fans. Lafayette's going to avoid uh, what could have been another scoring drive and have a chance to get back into this thing here before the half comes. And the Leopards get it back on downs, and around the right side is Kyle Mayfield. Yeah, Mayfield's kind of established himself as the go-to back, but uh, they, they, Lafayette would love to just establish that running game, keep the defense honest, and then allow Searfoss to really take advantage of that big arm. But uh, so far this game, it's been a lot of Searfoss throwing the ball vertically down the field. Uh, worked in the first quarter. I think it caught Fordham uh, by surprise, for sure. Well, we have two rushing touchdowns on the total is Mayfield again on the right side. This time he's got a little bit more room, but tripped up, brought down at the 41. So now 10 rushing touchdowns total this year for Chase Edmonds. He kind of came into this game with eight, and that was good enough for two at number two in the FCS. But for this entire Lafayette offense, they have one rushing touchdown. Just one, run, and, and it just goes to amplify the point about you know, if you want to tell the story of how difficult it's been for Lafayette to run the football in a stat, you could just say one rushing touchdown yeah. through five games. Does that tell the story? Absolutely. And you know that just really hurts Coach Tabani. Coach Tabani being a former running back himself, uh, he kind of cut his teeth as a running back coach coming up through the ranks. And you know he wants to, to ground and pound. He loves handing the ball off to, to the running back. But, uh, you know, when you get behind and – you got to score points. Sometimes you you got to you got to throw the ball, but uh, I think as you see Lafayette progress during the ten. season, they've got to somehow find a running game uh, to compete at this level. Now a great stop behind the line of scrimmage for the Rams brings up third down and ten. George Dawson got in the backfield and made things difficult. Searfoss, the ends coming around. His pass to the left side is caught. Mrazic with the grab on the far side and a huge third down conversion for Lafayette on third and 10 and they're able to get it inside the 30 and a new set of downs. Yeah, you can see good protection up front. Shearfall sees what he's like, throws the back shoulder pass. Very, very difficult to defend and Mrazic with that long, those long arms able to reach back and grab it. But nice pitch and catch and that's a lot of practice. A lot of reps in practice to get that timing just right. Came off flawless, looked really good. Inside eight minutes to go here in quarter number two, a 10-point advantage for Fordham, but Lafayette moving the football. First to 10. A false start. So the Leopards, an unforced error as they will move this back five yards. And again, this is the stuff that drives Coach Tavani crazy. It's the mental errors, it's the unforced errors, these are the kind of things that they've been great at all year long, leading the country, 3.4 penalties a game, but they had a couple key ones here just uh, very recently. Those are the kind of things you can't have against a quality program like Fordham. Got to minimize those, those mistakes. Searfoss pass to Morazic once again. This one is caught. And down at the 25. 
So a pickup of about nine yards in the play. It seems, it seems like Lafayette's starting to hurry up the pace a little bit. You know, they, they want to get at least one more score here before the half, maybe two, but uh, it just seems like their, their tempo starting to pick up a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of a, I guess, kind of a double-edged sword in some ways is timeout now Frank Tavani in, in, in the aspect that, yes, you want to keep that Fordham offense on the field, keep them off balance, but it also keeps more time on the clock for that Fordham offense to come back out and hand the ball to Chase Edmonds some more. 27-17 is our score, Rams on top. Lafayette trailing by 10, 639 here in quarter number two, but the Leopards with the football on second down. And charging up ahead is Mayfield as he's able to, to dive ahead among those running backs for Lafayette, along with Deshaun Brown, mentioned him coming into the game. Uh, Brown had 146 yards, still looking for his first rushing touchdown. He played just the last three games, missed two games, and returned against Villanova. And you get a look at Searfoss on in relief of Drew Reed, injured last week, going to hit, taken in the game against Holy Cross. Sirfoss feels the heat and he's gonna go down. And a huge defensive stop here from Jason Vaughn. Yeah, you can hear Sirfoss feels the pressure, steps up, but boy, just ran into a, a sea of maroon here and uh, looked like, yeah, the big man here, number 91, Justin Vaughn, kind of delivering a blow here. And you never wanna see your quarterback take those direct hits Searfoss taking a shot right there, but gets right back up. He's ready to battle here on fourth down, a very important fourth down. Lafayette wants to get a score here before the half. They need to execute here. Vaughn came in with one sack, has two today. Searfoss with plenty of time, feeling the pressure, throws it up, and it is caught. And it's Wadsworth, the big tight end, who hauls it in. Almost seemed like an act of desperation there. As Seaforce, he was trying, you know, Seaforce, he's, he's trying to buy time. You know, he's reading the field, trying to make things uh, happen here. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. All of a sudden feels more pressure and then just lets it rip in that desperation throw. But right there, Johnny on the spot, Wadsworth gets the first down, puts Lafayette in scoring position. Headsy play here by quarterback Blake Seaforce to get the first down. David Barlotta trying to give chase to Wadsworth to drop him. And Searfoss goes down there. And great pursuit and a defensive play by a number of Fordham players. The defense now trying to, George Dawson kind of leading the way as well for the Rams. Yeah. Good fake by Searfoss, gets the defense to bite. But number 46, Jesse Bramble right there, uh, not allowing Sear first to get outside. Good job of contain. And uh, again, Lafayette's knocking on the door, but can they get in? Lafayette has been in the red zone, had to settle for a field goal in the first quarter. Let's see what Sear Foss is able to do here on second down and goal. The pitch out to Mayfield. Can he get to the edge? No, he's tackled and brought down in a nice defensive pursuit by Antonio Jackson, who makes the stop. The sophomore from Leesburg, Virginia. See, again, this is where that running attack really pays off. You got to have that go-to back with the nose for the end zone who's going to fight and find a way to get in the end zone no matter what. It's been one of the things that, that has hurt Lafayette all year long. But here inside the red zone, you got to find a way to get that ball in the end zone, throw it, pass, run, whatever it takes. But right now, Lafayette struggling to try to get that ball in here before the half to get that score. The Lepers just two of seven on third down conversions. And tripping up is Brown, Deshaun Brown. Oh, and unfortunately. <laughs> wow. Chase Edmonds bounces it to the outside. Will anybody get him? One man to beat. Chase Edmonds for the touchdown. The third rushing touchdown 
for Chase Edmonds today, a 74 yarder. And it's the one thing Frank Tavani, among other things, that he wanted to try to prevent today, and that's the big run from Chase Edmonds, and they're unable to stop him here. Yeah, starts up the middle and then just darts to the outside, and then off to the races. Nobody's going to catch him. And Coach Devani said, you know what, we know we're not going to stop him, but we want to contain him, and you just can't. The guy is a talented running back, hides behind that offensive line, and then just jolts out to the outside. Over 200 yards so far today, and you got to take your hat off to this young man. He is a talent. Extra point is good, 226 yard afternoon so far. I'd say it's a pretty good day to this point for Chase Edmonds. As you get another look, as uh, the rain has let up here, still a little slick down there in the field. You hate to make excuses for, the coach doesn't want to make excuses for poor tackling, but Edmonds, his talent is just impressive. Yeah, I mean, speed, quickness, vision, these are all the things that great running backs possess. And as you see, he started up the middle and then just jolted out to the right, and nobody was going to catch him from there on in. Uh, tremendous athleticism, tough running back, having himself quite a day here in the rain, uh, over 200 yards so far, and we're still in the first half. And he keeps with every big run like that. He had two big ones last week. In fact, he had four touchdowns, 208 yards in the loss to Monmouth. One was a 77-yard touchdown run. The other was 55. And with the afternoon he's putting together today, he's just taking big chunks off the deficit. He needs to become the all-time leading rusher here in school history. 4,617 yards. That's the magic number. It came into the day 546 yards shy of that. So 226. And Tom, you're a smart guy. I know I'm sure you're good with numbers. <laughs> But uh, he's he's approaching. You probably we won't get there today. Oh, he's knocking on the door. He's definitely going to break the record this year. And you know he's just a junior. He's just a junior. I'll give you one number here, just to put in the back of your mind here, Tom, and for those watching at home, as the kick return here for Lafayette. As uh, we will allow Eric Mitchell on the return. Eric Mitchell to finish up his return. All right, so the number, if you if you want to pay attention, is 347. Now, it's a single game and Fordham rushing record, 347 yards. It happened, he did it against Lehigh last year. So he's at 226 now. <laughs> Still a lot of football left to be played. Still got a whole other second half to go. But it is a long season ahead, and, uh, you know, I, I think... Coach Briner, uh, it, it wants to kind of save him as the year progresses, but they want to get, they want to walk out of here with a win for sure. And if they need to go to him, they certainly will. And a timeout on the field. Yeah, and, and I asked Andrew Briner, I mean, sometimes you wonder, it's like how, how do players, let's just use like a Leonard Fournette, for example, a guy that has half the carries in his career. We'll just use him since everybody's familiar with, with him and his talent at the FBS level at LSU. How can a guy like that have half the carries but more injury problems than uh, Chase Edmonds, who has 600-plus <laughs> carries in his career, and he hardly misses a series or a snap, much less an entire games or stretches? Yeah, and Coach Briner alluded to this. He just doesn't take a big hit. You watch him. When he gets tackled, it's usually a shoestring or somebody diving at his ankles. He's not taking those big collisions. And as a former running back, I know those big collisions take a toll over time. And, uh, you know, Chase has done a great job at just avoiding those big hits. Great for longevity. Sir Foss, his pass is intercepted right at the line of scrimmage. And how about that for this Ford of defense as Nick Angeli reaches up and makes the grab. Yeah. Boy, what an exciting play here for one of the big fellows on the front line at 6'1", 286. Oh, yeah, Nick Angeli just dropping back a little bit in coverage, and all of a sudden a big tackle. Uh, 6'1", 286, gets a pick for his team. You got to lo love it when the big guy gets <laughs> gets the, their hands on the ball. Look at that. He's got his big mitts with the gloves. Look at that. Like hands on the hips. <laughs> I caught it. I had to hit the deck. Worn out. No, that's great. He's great like, yeah, timing. He's like, yeah, we never practiced that one. Jeez. Nice job for uh, Angeli getting the pick. All right, the big tight end's back in the ball game. 
Yeah, Odom, and he's looking for it as he turns around in the pass beyond his outstretched hands delivered by Anderson. And again, Chase Edmonds still out there with this offense as you would expect. 12 carries. Look at the average. Jeez. You know, helped by that 74-yard touchdown run. Yeah, he's, playing at, he's playing on a different level. Over 18 yards per carry. Um, just 12 carries today. 226 yards. Fantastic job for the All-American. Preseason uh, favorite to be the Patriot League Player of the Year. Well-deserved. Feeling the pressure. Anderson goes to the end zone. And the foot is in for a score. And this one is caught by an exceptional receiver in Robbie Cantelli. And Cantelli gets his first touchdown of the day, fourth of the season. Yeah, again, good play fake. Linebacker bites, comes in late. Anderson delivers a nice ball, throws it up high, and Cantelli comes down with it. But Anderson takes another shot here. Fortunately, is able to roll away from the big hit, but does take another shot that delivers the ball right on the money. Cantelli gets the score. Fordham going up here right before the half. Michael Root delivering the big shot. And Red with the extra point to make it a 21 point advantage with 134 remaining here. And you start to get the feeling after that big 74 yard touchdown run by Chase Edmonds. That great touchdown grab from Robbie Cantelli. And this is gonna start to slip away here pretty quickly. That's what it's kind of leaning toward. You know, and uh, so far, first half, you know, got to take your head off. Kevin Anderson, that time, just looking down the barrel, knew he was going to take a big shot, but stayed in there, delivered the ball, got the touchdown pass. Um, I think you're now going to start to see Fordham switch up a little bit in the second half, maybe work, work more toward the running game, just try to pound it out, choose some time off the clock, and get out of here with what could be a, a big victory here in Patriot League matchup. And coming up at the half, half a look at the Seth Davis Show. Uh, Allie Rasman, the guest of the Seth Davis Show this week. We'll talk more about that here from Seth and Allie as well. We'll look around the league as uh, league action begins in earnest, as well as first half highlights and numbers from here at Fordham, which so far has heavily leaned in favor of the Rams, looking for their eighth straight win here at home. Cardenas on the kick. On the far side is Mitchell. Mitchell is able to break through the first contact and stopped at the 29-yard line. We're in Lafayette, and the offense will try to continue to move the football, which they have had some success, Tom, moving the football. It's just the drives have been stalled. They've had to settle for field goals. And when you're in a slugfest with a team like Fordham, you're not going to win that away. Exactly. You know, if they're going to go shot for shot, they're not going to come up on the winning end. Uh, but the effort is there. It's just the execution has got to get a little bit tighter. And, uh, you know, you got to make the most. When it's third down, you've got you to deliver, get those first downs, and keep the chains moving. Uh, this Fordham defense has been tough all day long, making it tough for Lafayette. No, Edmonds gets all the headlines we mentioned. The defense has certainly done a fantastic job as well. Wasworth on the grab from Sirfoss, as that's good for a first down across the 40 to the 42. And Sirfoss looks very comfortable running this hurry-up, two-minute uh, style offense, but getting the play in quick, releasing the ball quick, this time taking a sack, which is not part of the program. May have to take a timeout here. And Vaughn again with another tackle. Hands outstretched. In case you can't see him at 6'5", 287. <laughs> Here I am. So a timeout on the field taken in the last 49 seconds. And, and a timeout like this is really good for, for both teams. I mean, obviously for Frank Tavani, they want to make sure that they figure out what's a smart move to make here. And, and for Fordham, also a chance just to remind guys, hey, look, don't let somebody get behind you. Yeah, exactly. And, and the defensive backs here, you know, don't take chances in instance like this. There's 49 seconds. Keep everything in front of you. Don't let anybody get beyond you. Um, and this is where you're going to see people on the defensive line just rearing those ears, pinning those ears back, and just going at the quarterback. Um, you know, don't, don't let them run at this stage of the game. 
But uh, look to see Fordham really just play that kind of prevent defense. And uh, the defensive coordinator, John Holy, uh, you know, he's, he's not going to let these guys make a, a mental error at this point in the game. But you see the defensive backs, they're just. Well, and if you're Searfoss, too, you've got to be careful here. You put the ball in the air, you run the risk of it being intercepted. This one yeah. is not. Uh, but nowhere close to being down the field either. Tim Vangelis on the catch. Yeah, Fordham will let them do the dink and duck stuff for the next 39 seconds. It's not going to mean a whole lot. They might get in a field goal position. Most likely not. Well, another timeout on the field. It gives us a chance uh, again to, to revisit where these two teams, the path that have, has got them here to this point. Uh, for Fordham at two and two. And last week losing in overtime to Monmouth. Heartbreaker, overtime yeah. loss. Both of these teams really had difficult weeks a, a week ago. Yeah, both teams lost in uh, in battles. You know, when you think of Lafayette, um, you know, they, they lost their quarterback, Drew Reed, their linebacker, Brandon Bryant. Searfors comes off the bench, has a big game, you know, throws for 280 yards, four touchdowns, but Holy Cross just able to score 22 points in the fourth quarter. And that, that just, you know, that's a backbreaker. Um, Lee, uh, Lafayette came out firing. Uh, you could see they were... They were engaged, they were ready to take this game on, but uh, Fordham is a tough program, and they're, they're looking solid today. Well, Searfos turns it loose down the far sideline, and it's beyond his, ten, his intended receiver, Tim Vangelis, just behind him. Oh, clock will stop. It says 39 seconds. I don't think any time clicked off the clock. They may have to reset the, yeah. uh, the clock. But it'll bring up a fourth down. And then Lafayette will go ahead and punt this one away. Corey Cattle from the 13-yard line. Cattle still on the run, coming to the near sideline. It's going to go out of bounds, wrapped up, and dropped at the 31. Best plays for the biggest games every Saturday, every week. Now the football season is upon us and well underway. Don't forget Campus Insiders is your one-stop shop to rewind and replay the best action of the day. Campus Insiders Rewind. I'd like to say hi to our producers, hardworking producers, editors back in World Headquarters in Chicago as they put all those together and put them up. You see them on your social media or Facebook. Growth has just been incredible over the past eight to 12 months. And if you don't like us on Facebook, you want to be sure to do that. Like nice size, bite-sized nuggets of highlights throughout the day on, on Saturday to keep track while you watch your favorite games and keep an eye on our timeline. And so Kevin Anderson quick to the line of scrimmage, trying to get the clock to stop after getting the first down. And uh, interesting, I mean, yeah, th there's no let up here. Fordham, I was going to say if this is Fordham, working on something, but no, there. No, Fordham says, hey, you know what? We got 15 seconds. If we can get another 30 yards or so, maybe we get another field goal here before the half. They're not letting up at all. So 15 seconds to go. Ball spotted at the Fordham 45. Anderson stepping up, and he's going to dump it off to Chase Edmonds. He was behind the line of scrimmage. Anderson going downfield as a downfield blocker for Edmonds. On the run, are they going to be able to get up and stop this clock with any time, though, Tom? Well, they might. Ah, nope, there you go. That's what you don't want to have. Oh. You start getting a little cute here. Instead of taking the knee and going into a half, you try to push it. That time they fumbled the snap. Could have been Could have been a nightmare. Well, flag down on the play. Two seconds remaining. It's a five-yard yard penalty with a 10-second runoff. Half is over. Yeah, so penalty on Fordham. So they run off the remainder of the clock. And as these two teams go into the locker room at halftime, Chase Edmonds walks in with the potential star to another career-type performance. 12 carries, 226 yards, and three trips to the end zone, including a 74-yard touchdown run 
and Fordham after turning the football over on a Kevin Anderson interception that was returned for a touchdown to make it 7-0 Lafayette. It's been all Fordham ever since. It really has. Great first quarter, very competitive back and forth, but Fordham just really started to run away with it in the second quarter, led by Chase Edmonds, who's having himself a big day, 226 yards, uh, and he's just warming up. He still has another half to go. It's the powerhouse spark plug here in FCS football. 5'9", 205 pounds from Harrisburg, Virginia. I can barely hear it. And uh, we're going to go down on the field, and it uh, looks like we've got Andrew Bryan, the head coach for Fordham, joining us. And, uh, Coach, it uh, looked like you were trying to continue to push the ball down the field and, and try to get more points on the board there at the end of the first half. Coach, what did you make of the first half of play for your, I guess we're having some audio problems with Coach Coach Briner. So we'll go ahead and step aside here from Jack Coffee right Field now, as uh, not, the fans uh, try to get dry and get themselves all set for the second half. Chase Edmonds, three touchdowns, 226 yards in this game so far, elusive, fast. He is the top running back right, in FCS football, and he has the Rams on top here at halftime, 41-20. 41-20 is our halftime score. Fordham on top and in control as they look to continue a seven-game home winning streak. Ray Crawford here with Tom Kelleher in the booth of this one and a 61 points, partner. A lot of highlights to take a look at, so let's get to it. It really started, though, well for Lafayette and the interception of Kevin Anderson. Absolutely. Uh, the receiver slipped. All of a sudden, Lafayette gets on the board early, runs it back for a pick six. Um, but Kevin Anderson and, and Chase Edmonds, that's been the story all day. Chase Edmonds here making a, a quick cut and then off to the end zone. Over 227 yards so far here on the first half. And what about the quarterback, Kevin Anderson? 109 yards rushing himself <laughs> on 10 carries and has also thrown for 121. But Chase Edmonds, this guy is really uh, one of the top backs in the country, not just in the FCS level, but a big, big talent. Kevin Anderson throwing the deep ball. But you know, you gotta take your hat off to Sirfus. He's taking some shots today, but he's throwing the ball down the field with confidence. Uh, Coach Tavani having a lot of confidence in this young man. He's a senior, has prepared like a starter for every game, uh, and has really shown poise in the quarterback position. But Fordham, gosh, it's it's been the, the Chase Edmonds story. Uh, he makes those quick cuts, and then he's off to the races. Tremendous vision. Coach uh, Tavani comparing his style to that of a Barry Sanders. What a great compliment and well-deserved for this man. Yeah. But my favorite, favorite <laughs> play, the big guy. Come on. <laughs> Nick Angeli, junior, 6'1", 286, getting the pick for his team. And then Kevin Anderson going up one last time before the half, throws the touchdown pass to his receiver, Cantelli, right down the middle, lobbing it in. Great, great first half here by the Fordham Rams, looking strong. I mean, if you're Coach Briner, how do you keep – you worry about keeping that sharpness, though, in the second half when really you look at a game that is in control, although we've seen bigger comebacks in the game of college football down through the history of the game. Absolutely. You don't want to get cute. You don't want to take your foot off the gas. But at the same point, you also don't want to get your starters injured uh, and risk injury as you go forth. The good news, Fordham has tremendous depth. And uh, if they do choose to take Ch uh, Chase Edmonds out, give him a break, they're not losing a whole lot. Kevin Pierce, he can pick up the slack and run with it. Um, he is a, a really solid running back. Uh, not only does he play special teams, but uh, he, does, he does a great job of giving the team spark when he gets in there. Uh, we might see a little bit more of him here, and I think we might see a little bit more of the running game. Try to chew some of that time off the clock. As it's now raining quite heavily, I was just down there on the field at <laughs> halftime. Uh, I think Fordham might choose to not throw the ball as much and really try to try to take advantage of their really strong running game and keep the keep the clock moving as they uh, as they get into the second half. Well, Angeli with that interception, the defensive lineman, and give a shout out too to Justin Vaughn. He's recorded two sacks for Fordham now three on the season. The big 6'5", 287-pound senior from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. So Lafayette won the opening toss. They elected to defer here to the second half, so they'll get it to start quarter number three, and it's Mitchell on the return. And a nice spark here at least to open things up as he stopped near the 35-yard line where Blake Searfoss and that Lafayette offense will try to get some momentum going here to start quarter number three. 
Yeah, and Sear Force, you know, what a tremendous leader, high character guy. Uh, last year, he actually uh, was a bone marrow donor. So things that you don't hear a lot about yeah. on the on the field stuff, but off the field, high character guy, trying to help out a, a, young, a man with leukemia. And that's that, that just shows the character of this guy. That's pretty remarkable, Kyle Mayfield on the handoff. Yeah, I mean, he did it during the season. And, um, you, you know, that's just that when there's a need, yeah, you can't wait till a certain part of the calendar or the year. It's, you know, when you get the call, you're a match. You kind of need to go to work, and that's what he did last year. Yeah. And, and you really, you know, that's, that's the important thing, that uh, he is a man of, of high character, saw an opportunity to help someone in need, stepped up in, uh, numerous medical visits with shots and, and all these things that go into the marrow. But uh, tremendous, tremendous guy. Shows the kind of leader he is. Well, on second down and 13, it looks like it might have been Vaughn who got his arm up. Let's see, the ball hit him. Well, I know the ball didn't cause the injury for, for the big guy, but it looks like he was in an awkward situation. Looks like he's injured that shoulder, left shoulder. Oh, yeah, that could be a possibility, too. The training staff out to take a look. It's Vaughn with it engaged on that right arm and comes back across with his left. Yeah, it looks like he was in an awkward position, got the shoulder up and then, then took a shot. But yeah, that, that usually indicates a, a sprain of the left shoulder, some kind of a, a separation. But he's clearly in pain and uh, we hope the best for, for Justin Vaughn having a big game today. The seniors have uh, been on several big plays and um, hopefully he'll be okay. Well, not a, just a loss for this game uh, with the two sacks that he has recorded in this one this afternoon, but during the long stretch, certainly don't want to have him out any longer than he has to be. Searfoss's pass over the middle is nearly intercepted. Wow, I think he'd like to have that one back. Threw it into traffic, three defenders right there. Clearly not the right read, but uh, he delivered a bullet. But as he was dropping back, he saw the opening, but look at that, three defenders right, right there ill-advised pass and that will bring up a fourth down and a punting situation here for for Lafayette not the way they wanted that first drive in the second half to go if Noah Fitzgerald on the tight coverage Lawrence Menya also there as well as Corey Cattle gets set to field this punt and backtracking almost over his shoulder like a baseball catch has to turn at the 10 yard line and head it back up field and stopped at the 30 yard line so Corey Cattle with no doubt some rain coming into his face, able to track that one down and get a decent return out of it. Yeah, kind of made that catch over the shoulder, uh, a la Willie Mays, makes the catch in, you know, one of those situations where it could have easily gotten trapped uh, inside the 20 yard line, but makes something happen, gives his team good field position and kudos. Uh, great, great special teams by Fordham all day long. But uh, in this case, giving them good field position to start second half. Get a look at uh, Cattle, and boy, he's got a touchdown grab in this one. Starter still in the ball game for Fordham. And this is going to be Chase Edmonds, spins at the 30, and gets ahead for a gain of about four yards in the play. As they continue to uh, work on Vaughn on the bench in the sideline. This is Anderson now on second down and seven. Edmonds pauses, oh. finds a hole. Chase Edmonds, see you later to the end zone for six more. The fourth touchdown of the afternoon for the junior from New Jersey. He just makes it look so easy, doesn't he? Well, as you see here, he, he just has a wide open hole. Ray, I think you could have run that one right <laughs> up the chute. I mean, that was fantastic blocking by the big guys up front. Doesn't even get touched. Chase Edmonds runs for another big one. He is now going to approach that record. What did we yeah. say? He needed 347. 347 is the Fordham and Patriot League single game rushing record. And he did it against Lehigh last season. And he stands on 14 carries, 297 yards. That was a 67 yard touchdown run. The extra point is good. So add seven more on the board here for Fordham. Early going here in the third quarter, the Rams pick up where they left off, and so do Edmonds up big on Lafayette. A 67-yard touchdown run from 
Junior Chase Edmonds, he's now one touchdown shy of the Patriot League single game record of five scores. He has four. That seems to be a good number. Uh, I think he had four touchdowns last week. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this guy, is, uh, he just makes it look so easy out there. Very comfortable. Avoids the first tackler, and then he's off to the races. But kudos to the... Uh, the offensive lineman up front, those guys have been doing a great job all day, opening the holes for him and giving him the opportunity to run. So kudos to the, the big guys up front. It's been spectacular for sure. Cardenas on the kick and taken to the 25-yard line. Is, I mean, Chase Edmonds, it's, it's been remarkable, the consistency. I mean, you know, gap control is huge for Lafayette. Frank Tavani mentioned it, and he's finding those seams. Uh, Coach Tavani, you know, he was so complimentary of, of Chase Edmonds, and he just said, look, we just want to contain this guy. We know we're not going to stop him. But um, I don't think he had any idea that uh, Chase Edmonds would have the day that he's had so far. And it's just the beginning of the third period here. Yeah, a lot of football left to be played. This is Deshaun Brown along the left side in one of the better running plays of the afternoon so far in the third quarter. As uh, Lafayette we got a player down on the field. A Leopards player down on the field. Looks like yeah, one of the, looks like one of the offensive linemen. Might be number 68. Uh, yeah, we can't get a read just yet. Yep, 68. That would be Nick Zadaveski, senior, 300 pounder. And it looks like it could be a knee or ankle injury. He's getting medical attention on the field. Oh, he missed the first two weeks of the season with injury. He also has his brother Kevin, also one of the offensive linemen for Lafayette. Well, while the trainers attend to him, uh, we'll step aside. Fordham in control here in the third quarter, up by 28. Well, there you get a look as we return to Jack Coffey Field. We return here to Jack Coffey Field to get a look at Nick Zadaveski being helped off. This is certainly not what you want to see for the Leopards. And I mentioned before we went to the break, he missed the first two weeks of the season due to injury. A right tackle starter with his brother Kevin. He's on the right side, number 68. And there you see, he goes down and immediately reaches for his left knee. As Brown uh, goes to the left side to finish the play. So uh, Zadaveski helped off the field. We mentioned again, his brother out there, he'll continue to play on. His brother Kevin, as a matter of fact, had to make a position change, move from right guard to center this season. And this is Brown around the left side. Some room to run. Brown and what could be the best run from scrimmage so far today for the Leopards is now Deshaun Brown seems to have a little bit of momentum and has things going a little bit here in the running game for Lafayette with two decent runs here on back-to-back -back plays as the clock goes under 13 minutes here in quarter number three. And I think Fordham defensive coordinator, John Holy, I, th I think he's going to let that stuff go on. You know, if they want to kind of spread the field, run laterally, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's going to chew up a lot of clock, and that clock is not Lafayette's friend right now. Now Searfoss's pass attempt to Brown is incomplete. And out there in coverage is Noah Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, one of the solid performers for Fordham as you get a look at Frank Tavani. Yeah, you can sense his frustration, you know. He really wanted to come out firing in that first quarter. They looked so sharp. But uh, as the game has progressed, Fordham has really separated themselves. And uh, you can see the frustration on Coach Tavani's face. What's interesting is Fitzgerald for Fordham is playing in his 45th game. He's played in every game. Sirfos looking deep. Has a couple men out there, but it's going to be intercepted. Flags come in on the play. And bringing it back the other way is Fordham. As across midfield, there's one man to beat and taking it into the end zone. But again, there's a flag back here in the place. So we're going to have to wait and see. There is a flag on 
Yeah, Dylan Maben. Yeah, I think it's all coming back. Um, but a little razzmatazz by Lafayette, you know, taking some chances here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do the old running back, pitch play back to the quarterback. Searfers lets it go, but I, I think there was some contact in the backfield. Could all be coming back. It's a long run for uh, Mabin. <laughs> he might need he uh -oh. might need a break after it that. It was one. a long run. I'm tired just watching him. Two Jeez. fouls on the play. Both by five corridor. We have personal, we have foul. personal foul. Number seven, seven. hitting a defenseless hitting player. player. That penalty is de declined. Pass interference, defense. It's 15-yard penalty, first down. All right, so a couple of penalties here, both working against Fordham. I'll see if we can find the pass interference here. They mentioned Fitzgerald on the, the contact. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah Caleb Ham. Looked like Ham just grabbed him. <laughs> <laughs> Flat out gave him the old horse collar, pulls him down. And the interesting thing is if he just would have played it clean, it could have been the, the interception. I don't think he had to do it. And Brown tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Ham coming up, kind of making amends for being whistled for the penalty. He comes up to make the tackle. Yeah, Ham with a nice play, but, uh, yeah, that pass interference one. You know, at, at this stage of the game, you know, you never want to give up a big play, but... Uh, that one so obvious. Hamill, uh, he'll be rethinking that one later. So now second down and 12. Searfoss and Lafayette down 28. They got an opening drive interception for a touchdown to go up 7-0, and it's been all Rams ever since. Searfoss running for his life, and boy, hand to the face out there, but no flag on the play. Yeah, it looked like a horse collar as, as he went down. George Dawson comes in. Let's see here that, oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wrapped around the neck. Yeah, I mean, anytime there's, you know, a shot to the head or the, the neck area, usually you see a flag accompany it, but not this time. George Dawson avoids the flag, and we continue on. Searfoss on third down. He goes on the run and dives ahead. He's got the first down inside the 30. Stopped at the 26-yard line, and boy, Lafayette able to move the chains here a little bit. Impressed with Searfoss's running ability here. Yeah, sees the opening. Nothing there. Makes something out of nothing here. But notice here, he, he just, that extra effort to dive forward gets him enough to get the first down, and that's the gutsy play by Searfoss. He's, he's going to leave everything on the field today. And you, you applaud just his, his pure grit. Tough, tough kid. Well, Ham comes up with the stop over the middle. Searfoss looking to the right side. Pass is caught. And that's going to be Vangelis with the grab. And Ham is in the vicinity of that play as well. And we approach 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Lafayette quickly back up to the line of scrimmage. Pass out to the far side. That's Thomas, and he is going to be wrapped up and brought down by Antonio Jackson. Yeah, nice move by Thomas to make the defender miss. You always want to make that first, first defender miss and uh, turned into a big play. Gets the first down. And here's that up-tempo, Tom. And the give to Emil. Yeah, and that up-tempo... You know, what it does is it keeps the base defense on the field. There's no time for substitution. And uh, you can see the Fordham team looks like they're, they're starting to tire out a little bit. And Lafayette is going to just keep on hammering, try to get as many plays as they can to get the ball in the end zone and reduce this deficit. They're, they're down by 28 here. They've got to they've score on every drive. That upbeat, fast tempo seems to be working for them so far. Got to look at number six for Fordham. George Dawson, one of the captains of this football team. Second down and goal. Searfoss. Throwing in, is it intercepted? Oh, yes. It is picked off by Antonio Jackson. So a huge turnover as the Rams defense rises up in the red zone on second down and goal. Yeah, Seifers throws a bullet, but you know what? Uh, number 35, Antonio Jackson just undercuts the route 
makes a great athletic play here. Looks like the ball was thrown a little bit behind his receiver, the intended receiver here of uh, Palumbo. But nice play here. Now you're starting to see Fordham just, just separating themselves even more here from Lafayette. But you got to applaud the effort. Lafayette's trying. They're taking chances. They're, there's no quit in this team. Now you look at what Fordham's been able to do. Now a school record in this game today, 407 yards of total team rushing offense. They're going to add to it here. As diving ahead for a couple of yards. And the pickup is Chase Edmonds. What's interesting in the first half, Tom, you saw the touchdown from Lafayette, and they had nice drives that were stalled, and they got some field goals from Jacob Bissell, and now they don't even come away with any points there. That's even more frustrating as they try to really what, what is starting to become a very, very steep hill to climb down 28. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough hill to climb. Again, the effort's there. It's just the execution, and uh, Fordham clearly separating themselves as – as a very talented team, uh, we knew that going into it. But uh, again, the effort of Lafayette is there. They're they're trying as hard as they can, but this Fordham team is tough. They're playing solid defense, forcing those turnovers, and then when they get the ball back, you know Chase Edmonds is having himself a field day. Well, Tyler Bowen, the offensive coordinator for the Rams, going down the depth chart a little bit in the roster. Noah Nix with the catch from Kevin Anderson. Good for a first down. Now Anderson back out of the shotgun once again. Takes the snap, steps up, now comes back, looking deep downfield, and it is incomplete. And out there on the run for Fordham is number 25, and that's Jordan Allen. Allen had a grab in the first half, a part of the offense for the Rams, as uh, that's the one thing about this program. Joe Moorhead goes away, but that's something – Frank Taviani mentioned to us as well that, hey, look, it just they look like the same thing. They didn't expect a lot of change with the new coach. Yeah, that continuity, um, having the same systems, having familiar coaches on the staff, uh, it, it, all, it all comes to play here. Here goes Chase Edmonds again, one man to beat. If he can, across midfield, and able to slow him down enough. So he could be tackled as uh, Draylon James was able to cause the direct misdirection enough to slow him down at midfield right here yeah and as, as you can see chase edmonds he just makes one cut and then he just takes off doesn't get touched till he's about 40 yards down the field uh and again he does not take a, a big hit he just gets that ankle ankle kind of grabber tackle and that's why you've seen the longevity the health of chase edmonds but at some point you got to think they're going to put him on the sideline <laughs> and uh keep him preserved but uh, not right now. Right now he's on pace to have a, uh, an absolute uh, record on his uh, performance for today. A 49-yard run just to add those to the totals as he continues to creep closer to that number of 347. So he's thinking back in the day uh, when I was at Holy Cross, we had a running back, Gil Fennerty, who put up 337 yards against Columbia. And I thought I'd never see anything like that again. And I, uh, I think that's about to be broken here today. And there's the backup, Kendall Piercy. Kind of caught in the backfield a little bit. Um, Going to take a loss. So the Patriot League record has fallen. Once held by Chase Esmonds, he broke his own record by a yard, 348 yards rushing. That's a single-game Patriot League and school record. So congratulations to Chase Edmonds and. If you take a look at their media guide, which so many of them are free and available online, I think they've got a couple of pages devoted to Chase Edmonds and all of his accolades. The pass to Anderson to the outside is caught by Allen. Jordan Allen with the grab on that far sideline. As uh, the offense just continues to, to move here, Kendall Piercy on the field. As Edmonds takes a break. So it's going to be fourth down and short. And it looks like the field goal unit is going to come out here, and they're going to have to get set up here with 13 seconds yeah, on the play clock. McKay Red. Now it's within his range. This would be a 
Season long, I believe, 42 yards on its way and good. Jeez. 44, rather. 44-yard field goal by McKay Red. And it's his longest of the season. And they just hit you in all fast. It's even on special teams. Rams up big. Well, the numbers are just incredible and impressive. Uh, a new Patriot League and school record for Chase Edmonds in this game. Uh, going 348 yards, breaking his own record, I might add. And four today as a team, 458 yards rushing. Also thanks to 100-plus put up by their quarterback, Kevin Anderson. The Patriot League mark is 531 yards. And, and you do start to wonder, is, is Fordham will kick off here uh, to Lafayette. And it'll be taken at the 22-yard line. And being... So what, that's what's remarkable is the number of carries. Just 16, look at Kevin Anderson. I mean, everybody is enjoying a Saturday on the sideline for the Rams. Well, you know, that, that's enjoying the fruits of your labor. These kids work so hard, off-season, preseason. All, it all comes together. When you get a chance to win, uh, it feels good. Have some fun, enjoy it. And meanwhile, for the Leopards, they're just trying to make some positives just like that run and an impressive one at that from Mayfield out of the backfield as he kind of puts his head down and bashes his way ahead for a couple of more at the end of the play. Yeah, good effort here. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> too, too much too late here. But again, that's what you see in this Lafayette team. There's no quit. And that's, that's part of that character development where they're going to keep fighting until the final whistle blows. Sir Foss, near side, caught there by... Chenoweth. But a nice defensive play from Caleb Ham to wrap him up. Antonio Jackson in on the play as well. So it's going to go as a loss of a couple of yards. And you, you mentioned, it, and it certainly, you know, down 31 seems to be that, uh, you know, Fordham is definitely in control here. Sir Foss on third. Over the middle, the pass is caught by Wadsworth and Dylan Wadsworth with a nice grab and a great pickup for the 6'3", 245-pound junior from Greenwich, Connecticut. Yep, Sir Foss throws a nice ball right over the middle. And you can see, I mean, that's the kind of stuff. It's the dinking and dunking. It picks up yards, but it's also chewing time off the clock. And again, Fordham defense is going to let everything happen in front of them. They're just not going to give up a big play. And ultimately, Lafayette will run out of time. Clock winding inside. Four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Mayfield to the left side. Gets a little bit of the edge. A flag comes in near the end of the run as he gets close to that marker. A couple yards shy. Let's there see what the call is going to be. Number six and on it's the going to be holding against Ten yard Lafayette. Penalty. First down. Yeah, again, uh, Coach Tavani talking about the discipline of his team. They're leading, leading uh, uh, as far as fewest penalties going, mm -hmm. but uh, they've had a handful today that have been costly. And they're usually when they're just about to get some momentum going, start getting closer to the red zone. Then you see a penalty that just pushes them back. That's a tough one. You got to tighten that up uh, to, to play in this league for sure. He had a nice run by Mayfield. A great, great pass to Wadsworth. A nice pickup. Here's Brown now as he tries to spin near the line of scrimmage and dives ahead for a pickup of three. He stopped at the 45 of Fordham. You mentioned 25 and two are the Rams in Patriot League play the last number of years going back to 2012. I mean, it's a pretty rare thing for them to lose. They were not eligible in 2013 yep. to mm -hmm. win the Patriot League championship, although they played league teams there because they had were ahead of the rest of the league in terms of handing out scholarships. They were not eligible to win the championship. Pass is caught over the middle and bring it to the near side inside the 40-yard line before finally being stopped is Mrazek. And you can just see that the talent that Fordham has. They've, they've done a great job of recruiting, getting a lot of, lot of players from the New Jersey area, New York, 
even tapping into Pennsylvania, um, and they're getting the type of talented players that historically they hadn't gotten prior to this scholarship era. And it, it shows it's making a huge difference. And you see Fordham's program is on the rise. They're the team to beat in the Patriot League yeah. right now. And Lafayette, this senior class that includes Drew Reed and others as Searfoss turns it loose down the far sideline. Intended for Chenoweth incomplete. As yes. Caleb Ham on the coverage of Chenoweth. And Searfoss took another shot as he delivered that. He's starting to get banged up. Uh, the, the defensive line of Fordham is, is starting to really, really just kind of pin their ears back and go at him. And, uh, but you know, you, you got to be proud of the effort of Searfoss, though. He's... He came in this situation off the bench last week, gets the start this week, and uh, came out came out with guns blazing. I mean, he was throwing the ball deep down the field from the get-go. Coach has shown a lot of confidence in him. And we've got a we've got an injured player being attended to down on the field. Well, mark your calendars. The next exclusive Patriot League football game at Campus Insiders will be next Saturday when Colgate visits Bucknell. Kickoff set for 1 o'clock Eastern exclusively on CampusInsiders.com. Tom, I know you'll be at that game, right? So you'll get a chance to see Colgate, the preseason pick to win, and repeat as Patriot League champs. Yeah, Colgate's got a solid program. Uh, a lot of continuity on their staff as well. Um, very much looking forward to that game next week. Oh, the injured player for Fordham. He's made it to the sideline. Now ready to resume play on fourth down and nine for the 39 and some movement. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like Max Roberts kind of came off the edge a little bit too quick there. Let's see what the actual call is. Or maybe that was Brandon Weir. We're not sure. Well, it's been an active defensive front for Fordham. And, you know, you, you want to win at the snap. And these players are still playing with 2.36 to go and the game well in hand. It could easily, some could sit back on their heels, but these guys are continuing to press. That's the thing about the depth with Fordham. You've always got somebody wanting your spot. So you can't go to sleep with four and a half to go, even with a 31-point lead. Passes complete and a nice pickup for Mrazek and this Lafayette offense. Yeah, Mrazek's a talent. Uh, big guy, six foot four. When he does those crossing routes, uh, as long as the um, Sierra Force is just leading him a little bit, you know, they're going to pick up eight, nine yards a shot. It's just, you know, the clock is ticking. They've got to... They got to keep this thing moving if they're going to have any shot at all. But down by 31, they need points and they need them quickly. Searfoss on first and 10. Looking deep downfield, and Chenoweth is incomplete. Ham there with good coverage in the back of the end zone. Yeah, a little pushing and shoving, a little hand game back and forth. Another look as Searfoss has time. Uh, it doesn't seem like they've had a lot of luck uh, trying to pick on Caleb Ham. I'm not saying they're intentionally picking on him. It just seems to be the number that is called on that particular play. But it seems like Ham has been on the coverage of the first option on a lot of these passing plays for Sirfos. This is Brown around the left side. He gets close to that first down marker. He'll be stopped, stopped though, a couple of yards shy down near the 15-yard line. And here is Lafayette once again in the red zone. Yep, hurry up offense, line up, keep the Fordham base defense on the field, call the next play, try to confuse them. Deshaun Brown around the left side. And on third and short, it looks like he's got the first down. So now they're in the end zone. And they have the first down as the chains will move. It'll be first to 10 from the 13 for the Leopards. The last time they were here is an interception thrown from Blake Searfoss. Let's see if they have yeah. any better luck this time. They're certainly in need, desperate need of points, down 51 to 20. The 
pass caught by Chenoweth. As Joey Chenoweth on the grab, Antonio Jackson able to wrap him up and bring him down at about the six. And bring up second down. Yeah. Now inside the red zone, this is where they've got to take advantage of those, those opportunities. Try to get a quick score here and make this thing interesting in the second half. No question. As the third quarter starting to wind down. Brown, can he find a hole and get in the end zone? He does. Deshaun Brown is in for the score. Touchdown Lafayette. Nice job with Brown here. A nice play from Deshaun Brown. Yeah, you can see the hole open, and then that's just lowering the shoulder and just, just using your effort to lunge in there, get the score. Great effort that time by Brown. Gets his team a touchdown here, much needed touchdown right before the end of this uh, third period. You know, Lafayette, you gotta say, the, these guys have grit, the effort continues to be there, and they keep on hustling. And the first rushing touchdown of the season for Brown, I believe just the second for them all season. Uh, Jacob Bissell on for the extra point, but a whistle. We have an injured player, perhaps? No delay of game. I thought I saw a Fordham player down at his knee, but instead it's delay of game. So now they'll march off that penalty and they'll try this again. Jacob Bissell, the all Patriot League second team performer last year as a freshman on now for a little bit more of a challenging extra point. Couple of field goals in this one today. And helped keep them in this game early. Before Chase Edmonds and Kevin Anderson and that Fordham offense really got going and got things churning in that second quarter. So the touchdown, the extra point is good. 25 that seconds to go, score. Fordham Your on top, Fordham 51 to 27. Frank Tavani trying to keep the spirits up. And I know at times in games like this, that can be challenging. As uh, Chase Edmonds, like he did last season in a huge performance against this same Leopards team, in which he went for 234 yards and a pair of scores, has four touchdowns. And at the near the 350 yard mark in this game this afternoon. So a year, you've, it, it, what's, it, what's even just as remarkable is that no one's surprised by him anymore. It's not like in, in some other sports when you get your first look at a guy, then you've got film on him, then you can defend him. And a lot of times the second or third go around is not as successful as the first. Yeah. But you, you know what you're going to get from Chase Edmonds, and you still can't stop him. It's you game plan all week. Uh, you film study. You practice. You try different schemes, different looks. But at the end of the day, you know you've got a. Yeah, I mean you, you're right. I mean it's a it's a great point. I mean you still have to execute on the field, and he is an extremely talented player and a great offensive line as his kick will take a bounce and go out of the back of the end zone. And, uh, you know, it's impressive. And, and Andrew Briner's been spoiled here in his time <laughs> uh, with Chase S. Edmonds. Let's listen. He set the bar um, for, for a lot of guys in the program. You know, you, you have a guy that talented that works that hard. Everybody works hard. And it's been really neat to see Chase mature, develop, and now starting to become a vocal leader. And that was one of the things that um, Coach was talking about is, you know, from day one when Chase Edmonds walked on this campus, he, he came on with something to prove, and his, and yeah. his work ethic is, is second to none. Um, and this guy wants to play. He's, he's a gamer, and uh, he's going to have a bright future. I expect to see him playing on Sundays uh, some point here in the very near future. Yeah, that would be fantastic. And, uh, you know, there have been some talented players that have come through the program over the past number of years as a player, another injured player down for Lafayette. And so, uh, as we wait to kind of get a number and see who's being attended to down in the field, and this would be a, another tough injury loss here for Lafayette. 
Yeah, these, these injuries, you know, it's part of the game. They happen all the time. Um, can't get a number, but uh, looks like, well, no. we're not sure. We're not sure at this point. But uh, the good news is uh, medical attention immediately right out on the field to, to take care of this young man. Uh, he's battling out there all day, and, you know, injuries are part of the game. You try to prevent them as much as you can, but, uh, but they do happen. The great news is both teams have tremendous medical staff. Uh, the, the training group here for Fordham, very attentive to their players, and uh, same, same for Lafayette. They really do take a, as good care of their players as they possibly can. We look down through the schedule of what has been for Lafayette. You also look at the schedule for Fordham and what lies ahead for Chase Edmonds and, and the rest of, of his teammates that are going to try to pursue Colgate. You know, a lot of folks, it, it's interesting when you look, you, you would think that Fordham would have won more championships, and they should have if not for Colgate and what they did <laughs> last year. It was remarkable. I mean, only to have, you know, two losses uh, and, and since 2012 in league play is is pretty incredible. And, yeah. and, and we'll be calling that game uh, Colgate-Fordham November 5th. That'll be a big one. That yeah. could be the two heavyweights in the Patriot League battling it out. Um, but Lafayette, as I look at them, you know, their schedule's tough. They got a lot of league play, but but they're traveling up to West Point next week. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I played against Army a couple times back in the day, and you know, you know those guys are going to come prepared, and they're going to – they're going to run that wishbone type offense. Well, it looks like Zapata yeah. uh, is coming off with the injury. Zapata came into the game with 26 tackles on the season, two and a half for a loss and a half a sack. And again, that's another key contributor here for Lafayette that you hope that that's not too serious. As he'll be a big help for this defense the rest of the way. It had to be tough last year. Is it had to be difficult last year for for Lafayette to go through the season they went through as the third quarter comes to a close. Uh, Lafayette tries their best to chip away at it. A touchdown, extra points, 27 Lafayette, but still a long mountain to climb here with 51 on the board for Fordham, including four touchdowns from sensational junior Chase Edmonds. A Patriot League record day for him as the Rams are in control heading to the fourth. We head to the fourth quarter here at Jack Coffey Field where Fordham leads 51 to 27. Well in control of their first league victory of the season. They've won seven consecutive games here at Fordham. And looking for their eighth straight at home. They've also won the last Second down. Second down. And they get uh, Fordham's Corey Cattle on the movement, so they'll push the Rams back five yards. But Fordham has won their last two in this series against Lafayette, although historically, believe it or not, it's the Leopards that have a sizable advantage True. in the series. Yeah, it's uh, a different different era now. Uh, <laughs> you can certainly you can see say that again. Yeah, Fordham's program has been on the upswing here for the last several years, and you know, as I said, they're, they're the team to beat right now in the Patriot League. Anderson looking to add to his throwing numbers today, and he's got Cantelli on the completion. Robbie Cantelli with oh, another big grab. Late flag. Oh, and a late flag comes in. You're right. Seemed like it was thrown after the play. Yeah, I wonder if there was a little, uh, oh, face mask. Interesting. Wow, face mask on Draylon James, one of the captains of this defensive unit for Lafayette. So they'll tack on some more on the end of that. Yeah, it was a late flag, but you can see here, uh, yeah, you can see that that hand, if it gets anywhere near the face mask, ref's going to call it, and Draylon James getting that big paw right up there on the mask, and uh, it's going to give give Fordham great field position here. Yeah, first and 10 for the 45, Kendall Piercy out of the backfield, busts up the middle, pick up of about six on the play. So what do you think? Do you give uh, Chase the, the rest of the afternoon off? I think so. I, I mean, <laughs> three, I, 348 yards, four touchdowns. He's had a couple of long runs that last was 74 yards. You know, I'm kind of curious to see what, uh, what Piercy can do. Well, Piercy has been the very capable backup 
for the past couple of years to Chase Edmonds. And, you know, you have to know in this program, you see the freshman year that Chase Ed Edmonds has, you have to sit back and think to yourself at, after that season, okay, am I okay with staying at this program and knowing that I may not play much? Well, he's back in the ball game here. <laughs> there, there's no quit here. So Edmonds, uh, wow. But, but he's in in the fourth quarter. But, uh, you know, that's the philosophy is they're just going to keep pressing, keep going and, until this thing is out of reach. And they give it to Edmonds looking for the Patriot League record of five touchdowns in a game. He has four. Chase Edmonds on the carry. But he just looks so smooth back there. You know, and as you see, he's got great vision. He sees where the opening is. But see how he makes that first defender miss? That's just a little body lean. He sticks his leg in and then just cuts. That explosiveness, you can't teach that. That's, that's just pure talent. It was interesting. Didn't Frank Tavani tell us he was recruited to Lafayette as a defensive back? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of schools saw him as a DB. And maybe, maybe that's how the Fordham uh, legacy begins. Anderson going for the corner. Is he in for the touchdown? Cattle. Give Corey Cattle six more points. Wow. What a catch. And what a throw from Kevin Anderson right on the money. Now the only spot he could get it to Cattle and stay in bounds just beyond the pylon as he just gets in for the touchdown, impressive play. Yeah, let, let's take a look. But as you can see, Cattle is, is kind of running here to the corner. He's got to look over his shoulder and... Oh, Ooh, did he? Yeah. Just got his foot, like I think, he in. just got one foot down. You need one foot in college, and looks like he got that down just before he went out of bounds. But Cattle, the 5'9 sophomore, uh, very athletic, able to keep that ball in his range. Come over the shoulder, catch it for the score. Fordham just continues to build their lead here. Now 58 points. The Reds extra point. Put seven more on the board. Now 58 to seven is our score. Corey Cattle on the hookup from Kevin Anderson. And a huge lead continues to grow for Fordham. Back here with you at Fordham. The Rams with a comfortable lead over Lafayette. Looks like they're going to go on their way to their eighth straight win at home. Corey Cattle on the touchdown grab, an athletic grab, and a great throw by Kevin Anderson. But was he in bounds and in? Did he get in? Control, foot? Yeah, Looks I think pretty that, good for that. Now, there is no officials replay in FCS football, but you look at home. Possession. There's the possession, yep. And foot. Foot across the goal line, and that's a touchdown. Has possession. Good call by Six the points. officials on the field. Who needs replay, right? There you go. The refs never get it wrong. <laughs> Officials got it right on that one. But nice, nice grab by uh, Cattle just to maintain his concentration. He had to turn his head, find the ball. And, you know, folks, it's getting dark out. We've got the lights on here. Uh, the fog is kind of coming in. It's getting a little darker, a little harder to see the ball. But great concentration by Cattle to bring in the score. Cattle with his second score of the day. He also had an 11-yard touchdown grab back in the first quarter. Now Lafayette will try to move the football down the field. And Sear Foss with the handoff as Rahan Merriweather. Now Rahan Merriweather gets his first carry of the afternoon as Frank Tavani started to go down that roster a little bit, want to take a look at some of his other players, and certainly rightfully so. May as well get some guys some carries and some game reps. Merriweather again around the right side. He turns the corner and a nice pickup on second down. And, you know, and I think that's what Coach Devani's looking for. He's looking for a spark. He's looking for somebody who's got some fight in, and he wants to find a running back. It's yeah. been running back by committee here for, for too long, and they just want to say, can we find that featured back? Is there anybody on the roster who can get out there and make something happen? And Rahan Merriweather's a junior, 5'11", 210. But he's, he's coming in, getting some valuable playing time, which uh, as the game's getting out of reach, that's where you want to see what your players have and give them an opportunity to play. Well, the Leopards here are four for 13 on third down conversion. Sirfos pump fakes, now throws it into the ground incomplete. Yeah, Sirfos taking another shot. They're starting to, starting to get to him as the... Fordham defensive lines pinning those ears back and just bringing the rush. Uh, they're starting to put a little extra pressure on Searfus. 
Another look at what Sirfos is facing after he gets rid of the football, Angeli. Oh yeah, Angeli. You know, his confidence is at an all-time high after getting his first pick yeah. of his career as a defensive lineman. He's, he's having a great day. Fourth and two. Lafayette will punt it away, an end-over-end -end kick. Cattle will take the fair catch at the 30-yard line. So Lafayette unable to get anything going on offense. Chase Edmonds and Fordham will get back on the field when we return. Back here with you at Fordham. The Rams in control over Lafayette and a new quarterback in for Fordham. It's Luke Medlock to back up in two games this year, just 204 passing. And one of those pass completions, though, was for a touchdown. The handoff is uh, you get a look at Andrew Briner and a lot of things to learn as a new coach. We asked him this week, what, what's been the biggest difference? And he said, and you hear this a lot from all coaches, it's just the people management. It's managing yeah. 120 players, staff, managers, it, and exactly. all that goes with it. It's not the on the field X's and O's, it's the players, the coaches, uh, the administration, the whole thing. It's a lot of people management and time management skills, something he's learning as a first year head coach. Um, and as he's learning, how to be a head coach on the field. He's also learning how to manage uh, a, a large organization of 120 people. Well, there's Medlock uh, moving the football as he wants to take advantage of his opportunities. And, you know, you're up 58-27. Now you, you do put, you go down your depth chart, put some of your backups in on both sides of the football. And, boy, these kids have practiced and played hard. They're going to expect them to play hard these last 11 minutes. You don't want to take, put the reins on them. Here's Kendall Piercy who had nothing on the left side, turns it around and brings it back to the right and a huge gain and another first down. Yeah, good to see Piercy getting some quality quality reps here. But uh, Luke Medlock, you know, he's a transfer from FIU. He's a Jacksonville native uh, that was hit hard by the, by the storm, Matthew, the hurricane. But uh, he's got a couple of brothers who've played the game here. Uh, Jake, uh, former FIU and Kennesaw State quarterback, and Sam played at FIU as a long snapper. So a couple brothers who've come before him who've played, played the game at the collegiate level. And uh, it's an opportunity for Luke to kind of showcase what he can do. Medlock with the handoff to Piercy. Nowhere to go. Kendall Piercy, the ball carrier, the tackle by number 24, Eric Mitchell. So Mitchell on the tackle. Third down and two under 10 minutes to go. No Fordham on top, 58 to 27. Down. So on third down and two, let's see what Medlock and Fordham is the call here on second down. Pass over the middle is incomplete, intended for Isaiah Seawright. It looked like a nice ball came, came out of Medlock's uh, hand. Maybe just a touch on the high and outside side, but throws the ball well, throws it with authority. Nice tight spiral. That time just out of the reach of Isaiah Seawright. Back up tight end. Now here's third down and 10. Got some creative signs down here for Fordham. I don't know if I recall that under the Joe Moorhead era. <laughs> Who knows? It could just be camouflage. Could be a distraction. That's true. Who could knows? Be. Medlock fires on third long. Pass falls incomplete. And so Fordham will have to punt it away. Let's take another look. Was this a catchable ball? I'm not sure, Tom. Let's yeah, see. A little low and outside. Yep. Looked like he, he kind of had a shot at it here. But uh, Allen, you know, any time that ball's fading, you're trying to get your hands underneath so it doesn't hit the ground. Um, Would have been a tough, tough grab, possibly questionable here the way it came into the ground. But a good effort by Allen. Nice ball, but uh, just a little bit short here. Brings up a punting situation. And this is the first punt of the game for Fordham. The first punt of the game comes with 9.22 left in the fourth quarter. And Joe Pavlik, just his 10th punt of the season, which is nearly 41 yards per punt. So there's a Lafayette offense will come back out, Tom. A, a quick look at just some other scores involving Patriot League teams today, and this one may come as a shocker to everybody. Lehigh with a 45-31 win 
over Colgate, the defending champs who made an incredible run of the FCS tournament in the championship playoffs a year ago, and they fall on the road to Lehigh by 14. Wow. That's a that's a shocker. I, I think a betting man probably would have gone the other way yeah. on that one. Also, Bucknell hanging on to a one-point lead over Holy Cross, 21-20 to 20, with three and a half minutes to go in the fourth Roger quarter. Georgetown trailing Princeton in non-conference play, 31-17. There's under two minutes to play in that game in D.C. And then our game here involving Lafayette and Tyler Fordham Long with the Rams the in control here with under nine minutes to go two, in the fourth quarter. Second down and eight. So now you look at uh, the balance of the Patriot League, and boy, that's going to turn a lot of heads with Lehigh, and that went over Colgate. Out of the backfield for Lafayette. Fly ahead close to that first down marker, though just shy is Merriweather. So again, conference play really starting to begin in earnest this weekend, and this is the preseason coaches poll, and there you see Lehigh picked to finish in the middle of the league. Colgate picked to repeat as champs, followed by Fordham. And then Holy Cross. Yeah, Holy they're... Cross is in a battle with Bucknell today, so yeah, boy, th this could really be an interesting fall. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's anybody's league right now. Fordham's my pick as this uh, as this season comes down. But I would have said, you know, look out for Holy Cross. But Peter Pulios uh, goes down with an injury. Uh, absolute top-notch quarterback. But with his injury going down, Holy Cross has struggled to, to kind of find their rhythm. And uh, that may drop them in this, the rankings here as, as the season goes on. But Colgate right up there, or uh, I'm sorry, Lehigh, surprising a lot of people today with that one. So this game against Lafayette for Fordham is the start of a three-game homestand. Now they'll go out of conference to face Yale next week. They'll come here to Jack Coffey Field. And then Georgetown will come in October the 22nd. So really they've got... If you look, if you go based on the preseason rankings, I mean, three of the top four teams in those preseason polls they face in three straight weeks beginning October 29th when they travel to Lehigh, and then they face Colgate at home, and as well as uh, Holy Cross. That's a game we'll be doing at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, that, that's really going to be a highlight for Fordham fans, uh, Patriot League fans in general. I mean, at Yankee Stadium, two-story programs, Holy Cross and Fordham battling it out in the Bronx. At Yankee Stadium, uh, you know that one's gonna that one's gonna be one for the record books. It's gonna be a lot of fun to call and two great programs battling it out there at Yankee Stadium. What a what a great hopefully something of a start of a new tradition. Yeah, we've seen football there at the Pinstripe Bowl and I know soccer's played there as well as obviously the Yankees. As Merriweather runs to the left side, it's stacked up and brought down and. Now the teammates, a lot of the guys down on the field who see some of these second and third string guys every day in practice, they don't get a chance a lot of times on Saturdays to get out and play. And they're up on their feet cheering for the twos and threes. And their teammates in this one with it well in hand. And that's a lot of time for second and third stringers to a lot of game experience with 7.04 left in the game. Yeah, it's valuable game time. It's not just scrap time. You know, Lafayette's going to come out throwing the ball, trying to trying to get some points. They're going to challenge these defensive backs of Fordham. And, you know, these reserve Fordham defensive backs are going to have to step up, make some plays. So extremely valuable experience here for these uh, defenders on the Fordham side. And James Biggs Frazier had a big hit uh, just a little while ago. He's getting some, some key, key reps here. Pass is complete to Chenoweth. And he has a first down into Fordham territory, stopped at the 43. Now Lafayette did achieve their average. I mean, they've been averaging 20 points a game this year, so they're at 27. And we, we, we see the scores, Tom, for the rest of the league today. Do you see them still being, can 27 points be competitive against other teams? Save for Fordham. Well, you'd like, you'd like to think so. If you can put up 27 but you got to play solid defense. You can't give up 58, you know. If, yeah. if they can keep it close, 
And, and if they if Lafayette plays the way they did in the first quarter, um, they got a turnover, they got a pick six early on, and they get that spark and get some momentum going, you know, they can be a team to be reckoned with. But um, they just have yet to establish that running game all, all year long. And, and that's something that's hurt them. They average so far this season just 64.6 rushing yards per game. And, and it looks like the search continues for the running game. There have been spurts of positivity for Lafayette out of the backfield. But a lot of it has really been Searfoss and Mrazek. And another completion there. What's left here for Lafayette, they travel to West Point to take on Army next week. That's a noon game. And they stay on the road. Back-to-back -back games at Army. Then to the road at Bucknell. They return home to face Georgetown. A tough one at Colgate on November the 12th. And again, after a one-win season a year ago, Chenoweth on another grab. And he might have gotten close just to get back to the line of scrimmage. It looks like he's actually going to go for a two-yard loss on the play. Bring up second down and 12. And looking at Lafayette's schedule, um, you know, West Point is not going to be any pushover at all. No. Buck FBS school, yeah, it'll be yeah. tough. Bucknell seems to be improving. They've got Georgetown at home. Then they're on the road to Colgate and finish it off with the, the great tradition of the Lehigh Lafayette game which is, uh, I believe, one of the, or the yeah. longest yep. uh, running rivalries in college. You're football. right. You're all right. Pass over the middle. This one is complete. And a nice catch and a pickup. Rocco Palumbo back in the lineup this week. I know Frank Tavani was glad to have him back in. Nine grabs, 155 yards coming into the game. The junior from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. And spinning and falling ahead as Amel out of the backfield. Well, here we go, Lafayette in the red zone, you know, looking to get a score. There's no quit in this team. I love the effort. It's now gone to final, Princeton beating Georgetown 31-17. A minute 20 now left in that game. Bucknell still clinging to a 21-20 lead, but Holy Cross has the football. So first down and goal here for Lafayette. Yeah, I mean, right now, this, this is all about trying to build some confidence, trying to take some positives out of the game. But when you have these drives and you get a score, you know, there's, there's some elation that comes with it, but it's also the mental aspect to say, you know what, guys, we can do it. We can move the ball. We can score. And that's what they're trying to do now, just build, you know, make the best out of a tough situation. Oh, look at Searfoss bouncing off of a defender and spins it in the end zone for a touchdown. And I, I, it's a great score for Lafayette. I'm sure Art Link, though, the, beg your pardon, uh, John Woolley, the defensive coordinator for Fordham, though, well, might want to know, get an answer why he wasn't wrapped up. They had it <laughs> stopped. And Sir Foss able to spin off the tackle and get into the end zone for the score. And Sir Foss, you know, has had a good day. He's he's thrown the ball well. He's, uh, he's run with authority. And, uh, you know, tough, tough kid making things happen here. And uh, he's going to be over 300 yards passing when it's all said and done. Yeah, Bissell tacks on the extra point. Blake Searfoss still trying to keep the Leopards alive in this one late in the fourth. Well, Blake Searfoss gets six more points on the board for Lafayette as they're uh, trying to get some positive momentum going into next week. And the road just continues to get more challenging for the Leopards as they will head to West Point to take on Army. But they get another touchdown try and make this look a little bit more interesting. Trailing 58 to 34 with 314 remaining. Kick goes into the end zone and taken for a touchback. You know, it was interesting when we talked to Andrew Briner, Fordham's head coach, and we said, what does Lafayette's defense look like on film? And he said, I thought it was interesting. He pointed out, yeah, you know, the last couple of years, Lafayette tried to do something a little bit different with us than what they show on film with other people. Yeah, it, it, it's a great call. And, um, you know, I think when they, they have an all-star running back like Chase Edmonds, you got to take some chances. You got to give them some looks that they haven't seen before, something that's not on film. But uh, it didn't seem like it mattered what they did today. Uh, it was just all, all Fordham all day and 
Chase Edmonds having himself a absolute field day, over 300 yards uh, on the day, and you know it just seemed like he was just warming up. Um, a great, great effort by the Fordham Rams. Tough, tough day here for the Leopards. You know, Briner, you can tell he's very young, young, young head coach just starting his head coaching career, but he's actually started coaching, almost born to coach back in 2006 when an injury is. Uh, we get another running back in the game here for Fordham. Able to charge ahead down the right side. Jared Brevard in the game with his first carry. But Briner actually had an injury his senior season in college and started coaching some of the receivers. So his coaching career really started during the senior year of his final season. Knocked out for the year at the injury. And it's just really been almost like he was born to do it. And linked up with Joe Moorhead as a grad assistant at UConn. Brought him down here. Became the offensive coordinator. Then when Joe Moorhead, after all the success he had here, went to Penn State to be their offensive coordinator. They promoted Andrew Briner up the list. A pass complete to the left side. And, and Briner, I think, is a good fit for this program. You know, he talked about in the old school ways of, of kind of leading with the stick versus the carrot. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, the 2016 student athlete, yeah. you know what? They, they want that positive reinforcement. Yep. They don't respond to the, the old school get in your face mentality. Now, Coach Briner can certainly bring that if he needs it, but uh, he prefers to, to lead with the carrot, uh, focus on the positive, really be a teacher and, and help these kids. And you can just see the passion of what he's doing. Uh, great, great fit for this program. Well, we saw the records that have fallen here with Chase Edmonds today as uh, he's done for the, the afternoon. But earlier this season, Elizabeth City State University put 83 points on the board. That's a new school and Patriot League record. So Andrew Briner, not five games into his career as a head coach, his record in points in, in an early season game. And now he's got a running back in Chase Edmonds who beats a Patriot League record and school record with his 348 plus yards in this effort in this game today 359 there you see the final numbers as Edmonds with helmet still at the ready with the clock winding down he has turned in quite the afternoon as Fordham will now elect to go ahead and, and take a knee and fifth most wins in FCS over the past four years, this Fordham program, sixth best winning percentage. I'm talking nationally, so we're talking about teams like North Dakota State, uh, big, big prime, big time programs in FCS football, and the fourth most home wins in FCS football since 2012. Five playoff appearances since 02 and the last three straight years. And uh, pick to finish preseason number two, but Colgate. Losers today against Lehigh, so already out of the gate. And, uh, Owen won. Offensive coordinator Tyler Bowen calling his favorite play of all time. Huh. Call it the old victory formation. Line up, take a knee, and get out of here with a win. Uh, congratulations to the Fordham Rams putting up 58 points. Just a real solid team effort. Offense, defense, special teams. They really, uh, they really came together well as a team, and uh, I, I do think they are the team to beat in the Patriot League. Well, they certainly showed no weakness in this game here today against a Lafayette team that Coach Briner had mentioned specifically, hey, this has been a competitive team. They just don't have the wins to show for it. So as it goes, though, Lafayette will fall to 1-5, and 0-2 oh in conference play, while Fordham will improve to 3-2 and 1-0 and and oh in league play. Tom, it was a pleasure. Yes, absolutely. A lot of fun, Ray, and look forward to meeting up in a couple of weeks That's and right. uh, doing this all over That's again. That's right. 58-34 to 34 is our final score. For more live Patriot League broadcast features and information, go to campusinsiders.com. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. For Tom Kelleher, I'm Ray Crawford. So long for the Bronx.